season can do. That includes two victories over top five programs. For the call, we sent it upstairs. Go flat. They're getting us, Johnson. Ross Aid Stadium on the campus of Purdue University. And we've got a great one for you tonight as the Penn State Nittany Lions come into town to take on the Purdue Boilermakers in prime time. Hi, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson along with my quarterback, Joel Klatt. And welcome to West Lafayette, folks. This should be a thriller. Penn State, last year, they got off to a great start, 5-0. and But because of injuries, they lost six of their last eight. However, their sixth-year veteran quarterback is healthy, and he's ready to lead the way tonight. I can't wait to see him play because of the excitement he talked to us about here in camp. Being ready for this week one game against Purdue. He understands Sean Clifford. The noise that's out there from the PSU fan base, which is, hey, you've been great sometimes. Auburn last year, terrific. Win at home. And then he struggled at times as well, like the bowl loss against Arkansas. He is healthy. He feels better than he ever has. He's primed for a big season. I think it starts tonight. Purdue's coming off a big season. They won nine games last year, including a big victory in their bowl game against Tennessee. Here's a team that scored terrific victories over Michigan State and, I and Iowa when they were in the top 25 and they also have a six-year yes. veteran quarterback in Aiden O'Connell who can really spin that rock. Well, Coach just touched on it. This guy finished as one of the hottest quarterbacks in the country. There was nobody playing better football than Aiden O'Connell. He is accurate. He is calm in the pocket. Nothing rattles this guy, and I think he's primed for a huge season. We've seen these guys late in their careers. Guys like Kenny Pickett have these monster years. I think Aiden O'Connell could be a guy like that that takes off starting here tonight night at home against Penn State. Now it's time for tonight's game countdown sponsored by Progressive in a series that dates back to 1951. A meeting right here in West Lafayette. Penn State leads it and they've won nine straight. Will Purdue boiler up on their home field tonight? Back to West Lafayette, Indiana on a beautiful night on the campus of Purdue University. Time now to join the third member of our team on the sideline, the All-American girl, Jenny Tag. Gus, look at this place. The energy here is electric, but you guys talked about those two veteran quarterbacks. Trust me, they are not phased by any of this. Purdue's Aiden O'Connell has worked too hard to get to this place. He started as a walk-on. Jeff Brown told us he is mature. He's to reflect on his six years at Penn State. And he took me back to Idaho 2019 when he had his first start. He said there were nerves. I was shaking. But there would still be nerves today, just a different kind of nervous energy, a business-like approach to the season. These two quarterbacks met for the first time this past summer at the Manning quarterback camp and said that they have a mutual respect for the journey that they've both been on. And thus, get this, today is Aiden O'Connell's 24th until after a win. All right, Jenny. Purdue won the toss to Fern. Penn State receiving, and they'll fair catch it on the goal line. So that will bring out the quarterback for Penn State, the Cincinnati kid, Sean Clifford. Well, Sean Clifford knows that they have got to get better as an offense running the ball. It was the biggest issue that they had and the reason that they didn't play well, he didn't play well late in the season. This guy, total yards, he's well over 8,000 yards. He's played a ton of football, but he knows they've got to get better running the rock, and they'll be trying to do that early in this game. So Penn State starts first and 10 at their own 25. Kevon Lee, their leading rusher last year in the backfield. They give it to him on first down. He'll crash forward, crossing the 25, up to the 27. Jackson Sullivan with the tackle. Let's take a look at Penn State offensively. Gus, I feel like they're better up front. Juice Scruggs, the center. He's certainly the leader. And then outside, watch for Parker Washington. He's electric. Gain of two, second down and eight of the 27. Uh, another handoff for the Nittany Lions. And it's Kevon Lee. And they really want to establish the run. And it's going to be hard against a tough Purdue defense. This defense is probably some greater than the parts. They don't have any one single star, but one guy to watch out for, Cam Allen. Probably their best player as a safety. Third down and four, the 31. Opening series for Penn State. Clifford steps up in the pocket, delivers, flag on the play, incomplete. 
Keandre Lambert Smith, the intended receiver, but let's see. It was Branson Dean with the pressure. So Penn State, three and out on their opening drive. Uh, there's the pressure outside. Actually, it's Kydron Jenkins, and he's the guy, by the way, that you've got to replace. A first-round draft pick. This defense is trying to replace George Karloftis because he was outstanding, an All-American pass rusher. they got to find somebody that can get to the quarterback, and on the first series, first third down, there's Kydron Jenkins. Young player getting to the quarterback. Amor put away. And Charlie Jones, the Iowa transfer, ready to receive and return. And he fair catches the football at the 31. So Aiden O'Connell in his sixth season. He's from Illinois. He was the eighth string quarterback when he started. Out of nine quarterbacks. And what a career. What perseverance this young man has shown. That's the word right there, perseverance. You know, this is one thing that I don't think kids are told coming into college football is guess what you will face adversity not if but when you will face adversity and he faced it head on continued to persevere continued to work and he's worked himself into one of the better quarterbacks in the sport first down and 10 of the 31 here's O'Connell scrambling in the pocket and he'll dump it off to King Doru Doru breaks the tackle he'll pick up seven maybe even eight yards on the play Curtis Jacobs with the tackle and it is a gain of eight up front these guys have got to keep O'Connell clean it starts with Gus Hartwig their center He's their leader up front, really the emotion of that offense. And then on the outside, they're having to replace David Bell. He's another guy that was an outstanding player for them. So who is going to step up and be the main target for O'Connell? Second down and two, quick strike underneath, and it's caught. Beautiful throw, great catch, Charlie Jones. A 10-yard gain, and Jones, a terrific return man at Iowa last year. He transfers in, as well as Tyrone Tracy, and Charlie Jones, by the way, he grew up with Aiden O'Connell. These guys played travel baseball, youth football together, and now here they are late in their careers in college, hooking up for a nice completion there on the opening series. First down and 10 of the 49, opening series for Purdue. And they'll go with the ground game. Not a lot there. Maybe a one-yard pickup for King Daru. Defensively, let's look at Penn State. Well, this defense was outstanding a year ago. They lose their defensive coordinator, Brent Pry. He's now the head coach at Virginia Tech. And who do they get? Manny Diaz is their new defensive coordinator. They lost a lot of great players off this defense. However, Gus, Manny Diaz has an absolute stud secondary. Jair Brown, 16. Joey Porter, the corner on the far side of your screen. If he plays well this year, he very well could be a first-round draft pick. Second down and nine at midfield. Here's O'Connell sliding, looking underneath, and it's caught Charlie Jones. Looks like a first down. Charlie Jones said this, when they played Pee Wee football together, they had two routes. And O'Connell would just throw 40-yard bombs and nobody can stop them. Now they're trying to put the band back together. Well, listen, these guys, both of these guys, Tracy and Charlie Jones, Charlie Jones already a couple of catches, but Gus, they bet on themselves. And I'm not disparaging anybody by saying the Iowa offense is not the most high-flying offense in college football. And these guys on the outside wanted to get into an offense that was going to sling it around. And here with Purdue, they got a chance for a lot of catches. First down at the 40-yard line, opening series for the Boilers. Here's O'Connell, sprints out of the pocket, delivers and incomplete. Payne Durham, redshirt senior, terrific tight end, was the intended receiver. This, this offense is... I think there's some misconceptions about this offense generally in the college football world. They think that it's high flying or more like a Mike Leach air raid. Yes, they throw it a lot here under Jeff Brom, but it's a bit more controlled. You know, they take their time in the huddle at times, and, and Jeff Brom is, is very nuanced in the way that he likes to attack defenses and get his quarterback in the right spot to be successful. When these teams met in 2019, O'Connell threw just one pass as the backup, and the floater incomplete. Jones, the target once again, 
Joey Porter covering defensively. Remember, Joey Porter's father, Joey Porter Sr., was a heck of a player for the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is what you're going to see a lot of out of this Manny Diaz defense. I think bump coverage, aggressive play out of the secondaries. And why not? Because Joey Porter is 6'2", 198, basically 200 pounds. He's got length, speed, he's physical. That's why he's one of the better corners in college football. Big down here for the Penn State defense. Let's see if they can get off the field. Third down and 10 for Purdue. King Doru in the backfield. O'Connell off his back foot in the corner and incomplete. No flags on the play. No. T.J. Sheffield, the intended receiver. Great coverage. Keaton Ellis there defensively for the Nittany Lions. Ellis did a great job getting over the top of that route. You know, as a quarterback, you'd love to take that and get it more vertical because you feel like you beat the underneath coverage. But the problem was the safety there, Keaton Ellis, number two, did a great job staying home, staying deep, and forcing that ball more towards the sideline. So Jack Antle punted it away from the 45. Parker Washington is the deep man at the 10. Antle, end over end kick. Let's see if it's got some backspin. Doesn't need it. Downed inside the five-yard line, a 36-yard punt. So coming up, the Cincinnati kid, Sean Clifford, sixth-year super senior, back on the field for the Nittany Lions. College football mayhem with our mayhem moment sponsored by Allstate. The last time Purdue called for a blackout was in 2018 when number two Ohio State, led by our guy Urban Meyer, came to West Lafayette and the Boilers delivered 49 on them with four touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Oh, there he looking at it. He took his headset off and he's walking away. He knew we were about to do that. Oh, look at him. My goodness, but. Gus, look who's in the game. Penn State fans, you've been waiting for this. Nick Singleton, best running back in the country, top running back recruit. Here it is. First down and 10, Singleton's first carry, and he breaks it 10 yards. And it looks like a first down, number 10, with nine on his first carry as a member of the Penn State Nittany Lions. This is a really good player. He is big, fast, and runs extremely hard. He has been the shining star of their fall camp. Second down and one at the 13. Singleton again follows his blockers, cuts it inside, and he'll pick up the first down. And this is what they've been looking for, a player comparable to Saquon Barkley. That's what they want. They think that this kid, like Travion Henderson at Ohio State, can really plug some holes. Yeah, they, and they need it. They need it desperately. They need to run the ball, and here he goes again. Three straight carries to start off his career. Nick Singleton with a gain of three on that play. The Gatorade National Player of the Year a season ago in Pennsylvania, which is about two and a half hours. It's Milton High School in Shillington, Pennsylvania, two and a half hours southeast of State College. Rushed for over 2,000 yards last year. Second and seven at the 19. And a goal with Washington on the end of round. And Parker Washington slung out of bounds by Chris Jefferson. Big third down opportunity here. And Purdue on their last chance on third down. They got some pressure on Clay Pratt. We'll see if they can get somebody in his face here. And that's what I'm always concerned with with a young running back is can he protect because he's in, I would send pressure if I was the defensive coordinator, Ron English here, send pressure and force Singleton to block and pass protection. They've run it four straight times, third down and three. Remember Clifford, he's got sweet feet. Out of the shotgun. Singleton is in the backfield. Clifford looking, delivers sideline, nice throw, nice catch. Parker Washington turns it up and gets the first down. Well, the first answer a young running back has is not, can you run the ball? Everyone knows you can run the ball. Can you protect? Do you know what you're doing? They bring a little corner pressure, and Singleton slides over, picks it up like his first third down. And they'll stay on the ground on first down. Singleton, very number 10. Cam Allen, terrific safety for Purdue with the hit. Second down 
And they call it seven. Clifford, delayed handoff. Singleton looking for room, and he's dragged down from behind. Nice tackle by Scotty Hippich. A game three. There's your next third down opportunity, but what that play does is it prevents a third and long. So now you got third and short here. The entire playbook is at your disposal. If they got a run look from the defense, they could still hand it off. This is where you want to be on third down, third and medium. Second series for Penn State, third down four. At the 39, Singleton remains in the game. Clifford dumps it underneath, think complete. Intended for Lambert Smith, but the Boilers secondary jump on it. Corey Trice in coverage for Purdue. Corey Trice is an excellent player. He's a fifth-year senior, 6'3", 215 pounds, great length and physical right there. Great job of avoiding contact until the ball got there and then going in and breaking up and pass. Corey Trice tore his ACL in practice in November. He's already back, and here he is making a big play. Charlie Jones back deep inside his own 20 as Amour punts it away. Line drive. And it's fair caught inside the 10. 51-yard punt, no return. Here comes Aiden O'Connell, 24 years old. This is his birthday. Let's see if he gets 20 to 20 time. See, those, those programs, those depth charts that are in those programs are historical pieces. So we're going to have to tell our buddy Jim Harbaugh that he needs to put the depth chart back in the program so these kids can be part of history. I don't disagree. I'm going to let you make that call. <laughs> Steve Sarkeesian, too, apparently. Yeah, First down and 10 at the 9 for Purdue. And here's Dylan Downing. And he'll be knocked out of bounds by Chop Robinson. Here's a look at Champions Mindset, sponsored by Hampton, by Hilton for the stay. Keys to the game. Run game improvement for Penn State. They've got to have it, and they've got a new leader on their defense with Manny Diaz. A lot of question marks there. Purdue, who answers the bell? David Bell leaves their wide receiver. Who's going to be that guy? Charlie Jones has been that guy early, and then they've got to make Penn State one-dimensional. O'Connell underneath, and it's caught. Wow! Joey Porter had an interception. He couldn't hang on, and T.J. Sheffield plucks it out of the air for a gain of 11 yards. That is great anticipation from Porter. He's just unable to finish the play. He's in a, a, a jam coverage, so he's got help over the top, which means that he can sit, he can squat on those easy, soft, flat routes. He jumps in there and almost has the interception. And then how about the concentration right there to pull that one in and get the completion? T.J. Sheffield for the win. First down at the 23. Play action. O'Connell, near side caught close to a first down this time it's Brock Thompson who gains nine so here, here's the chess match going on when you face Jeff Brom if you play your corners in soft coverage Gus he will take easy completions every single time that's one of the reasons they throw for over 70 percent he forces the corners to play up play tight and then what happens is later they'll start to run those fade routes and try to take shots down the field second and short first down boilermakers nicely done and downing leaning forward and he'll pick up four one of the mantras uh, of an offense like this and in particular for a former quarterback like jeff brown is just take what the defense gives you you know you get in your set and then you just evaluate where are are the weaknesses in the defense and now let's go exploit them with our concept and you can do that really well when you've got a smart veteran quarterback and that's certainly what they have facing Manny Diaz tonight Brock Thompson was the MVP of the Music City Bowl last year against Tennessee seven catches 217 yards and a couple of TDs first and ten at the 36 
O'Connell drops it off to Tyrone Tracy, the Iowa transfer. He'll cross the 40, keeps his legs moving, and he'll get close to that first down to Parker, depending on the spot. They're going to line him up at wide receiver and in the backfield. At times. Yeah, and they, they do feel like even though they don't have David Bell and Milton Wright, their other leading receiver from a year ago, they feel like they've got they some depth out there with the two tra transfers, including Tyrone Tracy. He was an Indiana Mr. Football, so kind of comes home. And now he's here for the Boilermakers. And he's a guy that they're relying on to make some big plays. Second down and one at the 75. Play Abby. Here's O'Connell. Winds up. Side wide open receiver. Got him at the 25. Charlie Jones again. This time he gains 29. Getting off to a hot start. Going to get the blitz off of this side. That's the corner blitz. And what they do is they just send the wide receiver right down the field. And O'Connell is smart enough to understand that he's got to drive that ball in the hole before the safety gets there. And Jair Brown is just a step late. And there's another completion to Charlie Jones. Born out of the knowledge that O'Connell has of the defense. He sees the corner blitz, knows where to go with the ball, and puts the, puts the perfect trajectory on the ball. Jones already three catches, 50 yards. First down and 10 to the 25. Here's the pitch. And Daru goes down at the line of scrimmage. Well played. Tyler Elson and Jair Brown combining on the tackle. Oh, I love Jair Brown. This guy can play football. He is really the spark plug, the emotional leader of this defense. And why wouldn't he be? We read about this guy's story. He had no scholarship offers. Found his way to Lackawanna Junior College. Now he's here at Penn State. Had six interceptions a year ago. Second down. O'Connell over the middle this time. Incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Payne Durham. Durham broke free late, but O'Connell had pressure in his fellies. Sutherland there in coverage. Former safety now moved down to linebacker, defending there on the tight end. And this is a big third down opportunity for Penn State after a nice big play and a nice drive for Purdue. Here's your chance. And Manny Diaz on third down, Gus, loves to get exotic. And you see that look. Everybody stood up at the line of scrimmage looking like they're going to blitz. Let's see if O'Connell... Looks for Charlie Jones again. Jones has three catches, ties his career high already. Third down and nine. He's lined up as the wide receiver at the top of your screen. They hand it off in the running game. And get inside the 20, downing. Tackled by Brown. So here's the question. Do they go for it on fourth down? Looks like they're sending in the kicking unit here. Nobody settled for more field goals. In the red zone than Purdue last year. Nobody made more field goals in the red zone than Purdue. That's not a stat that you want to lead the country in. They have really struggled. And even though that last play is the first time they got inside the 20, that's certainly kind of the scoring area there inside the 25. So Mitchell Federer in to attempt a 36-yard field goal. Transferred from Sanford. Got it down, up, and perfect. 3.38 to play in the first quarter. Purdue on their home field scores first as they take a 3-0 lead over Penn State. Back to West Lafayette right after this. Legendary Purdue quarterback Len Dawson passed away in August at the age of 87. Dawson was quarterback for Purdue from 1954 to 1956 where Hank Stram was an assistant he will go on to a Hall of Fame career under Stram with the Kansas City Chiefs winning Super Bowl IV and being named Super Bowl MVP. What a career. Great player at Purdue, Hall of Famer in the NFL, sensational broadcaster. Len Dawson, and they're wearing his number on their helmets tonight. Len Dawson, number 16. Singleton, who started from his own goal line. The talented freshman. And he'll get up to the 20 before being stopped. 3.32 to go, first quarter. Purdue up 3 0. We'll see what Penn State does after this. Perfect life, creating financial security for more than 140 years. Today's game is featured on the Free to Play Fox Bet 2 for 6. Ask one of the questions in tonight's contest is which team will have the most passing yards and how many will they have, Penn State or Purdue? 
history would tell you Purdue. And Aiden O'Connell, last half of last season, he was going up there north of four bills. That's right. But he's got to face a very good secondary tonight. I don't know if he'll get there. First there. down and 10 of the 21. Katron Allen comes in for the first time. Another talented freshman from Norfolk. Play action, deep drop. Clifford steps up in the pocket, delivers to the sideline, has his man. And it's Parker Washington. Nice throw. And Washington goes down at the 40-yard line. Graham with the tackle. That's a gain of 20. Washington did a really great job selling the run. And that's what allowed him to finally break out of his route and create space for a wide open throw for his quarterback, Sean Clifford. First down of the 41. Penn State, two possessions, two punts. Here's a handoff. Allen breaks free, and he'll get close to that first down marker. Jalen Graham with the tackle. Yeah, I, I really like what I've seen so far from the young running backs. I know that's his first carry, but they've been very high on Katron Allen. Nick Singleton and Katron Allen have been the two guys in fall camp that everybody is talking about. Sean Clifford raving about these two backs. And you see it just there on a nondescript carry like that. He's got some explosiveness to him. Second down and one at midfield. And Clifford, sideline. Washington took his eyes off the football, picks it up. It's an incomplete pass. And that will bring up third down and short. He just got anxious because he had some running room ahead of him. And you see out there, there's nobody out there defending. Parker Washington, if he catches that clean, he's got at least 10, probably 15 yards and just lost concentration. Third down and one at the 50. Katron Allen in the backfield. They'll give it to him. Looking for that first down, and he has it. Katron Allen spent the last three seasons at IMG Academy in Florida where he rushed for 1,400 yards and 27 touchdowns as a senior. Well, what I love about this is, is watch his patience before he makes the cut right here. He just jumps over, slides over to his left. Then he finds an opening, and he puts his pads down, and he's able to move the chains. That's tough to teach. In fact, some running back coaches will say that's impossible to teach, the ability to run with urgency and yet have patience to jump cut and find the correct hole. First down at the Purdue 47. Allen remains in the game. James Franklin trying to find the hot-handed running back. And they won't get it off, or will they? They do. Allen, lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. He run, ran into a lot of beef up front. Lawrence Johnson leading the way for the Boilers. This defense has played really well so far in this first quarter. you got to give Ron English credit. And Ron English is calling the defensive plays for the first time this year. He was here last year, but... They lost their coordinator to Wake Forest, and he steps in to be the defensive play caller, and he was very excited about this group. Empty backfield, Katron Allen lines up as a wide receiver at the top of your screen. Second down and 10. Clifford looking, steps up in the pocket, buying time. Clifford got rid of it, flag on the play. An incomplete, incomplete pass on the sideline. Tinsley, the receiver. Fakasieki with pressure on Clifford. Holding. Defense. Number 17. 10 yard penalty. Automatic first down. And that's Chris Jefferson. He was defending Keandre Lambert Smith, and Lambert Smith ran a really good route. Well, excuse me, that's Parker Washington right there, number three. And he's running up the field, and then there's the hold you see right there. And he just turns him around, and the flag came out. That's where the ball should have gone. Sean Clifford was looking that direction. He wanted to go to Parker Washington in the one-on-one -on -one scenario. And that held, forced him to hold the ball and get out of the pocket. Best drive of the night thus far for Penn State. First down and 10 at the 37. Tinsley in motion. Clifford, another deep drop. Let's it fly. And incomplete. Wow. Keandre Lambert Smith hit him in the worst place possible, right in his hands. That ball was thrown beautifully, like you said, Parker. I mean, that is on the up 
outfield shoulder is perfectly thrown great concept off the play action that ball's got to be caught and james franklin told us that keandre lambert smith they were waiting for him lots of talent but waiting for him to take the next step and become a force on this offense and he had a chance there and it slipped through his hands seventh play of the drive second down and ten clifford dumps it off looks like a screen and this time it's tyler warren back up tight end sophomore from virginia sanusi with a tackle here's another third down situation penn state only 50 percent so far 204 clifford gotta make something happen here third down and four Allen looking for room. Oh, and he got crushed. What a tackle. Sanusi again. Sanusi Kane with the stop. And that brings up fourth down and short. And Kane came flying up from that safety position. That was beautiful defense there on the third down. And Penn State will have to discuss their options inside the 30-yard line. Their best drive so far of the night. But it's stolen out. Big Ten Commissioner Kevin Warren in attendance tonight, and he has been a busy man, <laughs> Joe Klatt. There's no doubt, you know, as much as college football, you know, is, is nostalgic and tradition rules the day, every, everything seems to be changing in the sport and certainly is in the Big Ten this offseason. So Penn State electing to go for it on fourth down and two. At the Purdue 29, Devin Ford in the game now at running back for the Nittany Lions. Here's Clifford rolling out, drops it off, Ford with the catch, and it's a first down plus some. Mike Yersich with a nice call on this fourth down and short. I love this. You fake it to Ford, and then you allow him to just go right into the flat, and you see the defense sold out to stop the run. They had an extra lineman in the game, Bryce Efner, number 72, lined up as a tight end. A couple of tight ends in there, and you throw that big, heavy, it's called full-flow action, play action, right? So everything's going that one direction, and they get the completion and move the chains. First down at the 17. Clifford goes through his progression, steps up, looking for a space. And he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Clean first quarter, no turnovers, just one penalty. Second down and 10 at the 17. Katron Allen back in the game, the freshman from Norfolk. Strange, the motion man. Allen picking his way forward. Leg drive goes backwards, but he'll gain about five. Yeah. Well, and here comes another third down. You know, this, this Penn State offense has faced a few. Two of five so far today. Purdue has done a decent job. And what Penn State has done so far here early in this game is that they have really changed it up. There's full flow actions. They've thrown some screens. We'll see what they do here. Third and five. Best drive of the day so far for Penn State. Clifford looking. Drops it off. He's got his receiver. Tinsley gets to the end zone. And it's a touchdown. Mitch Tinsley with the 12-yard touchdown. And Penn State takes a 6-3 lead. Well, they're doing a great job here of attacking the linebackers. So here's the linebacker here for Purdue. And they're just bringing a crossing route. And the linebacker never gets width because of their position on the field on that hash they've got to get width right there and kieran douglas never gets over far enough and it's an easy completion and a run after the catch for a touchdown and a great drive Pinniger with the extra point and it's good 
12 plays covering 79 yards. As Mitchell Tinsley tiptoes into the end zone, Nittany Lions take a 7-3 lead here at Purdue. College football fans, you still have a chance to win $10,000 playing Fox Bet Super 6. Download the free to play Super 6 app now and pick six outcomes from tonight's game for a chance at the jackpot. How about Mitchell Kinsley, though? The way to Kentucky transfer who put up some gaudy numbers when he was West of Kentucky. I mean, tough. That's to say the least. I mean, this guy, 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns. Of course, Western Kentucky threw it all over the line. Remember, Bailey Zappi threw for like a million touchdowns. Well, Mitchell Tinsley transfers into Penn State and wearing Jahan Dotson's old number. And it's number five in the end zone again for the Nittany Lions. And Charlie Jones lets that one go over his head for a touchback. Let's take a look at what's taken place thus far. Last season was by far Purdue's best under coach Jeff Brom, winning nine games for the first time since 2003. That included two wins versus top three teams, dubbing them the Spoiler Makers. Their five road wins were the most since 1943, and they reached the college football playoff top 25 for the first time in school history. I had a couple of guys that were elite players, George Karloftis, David Bell. Those guys now exit, and the question now is for Purdue, can they maintain that level? And then even further, can they go up and actually compete for a championship in the Big Ten West? McConnell, that one thrown a tad bit low and incomplete. Tyrone Tracy, the target. Abdul Carter there defensively. And here's a kid that they are so high on, they gave him a number 11. Well, and th this this number at Penn State means something, right? You know, you're thinking of Micah Parsons and LeVar Arrington and, I mean, these great linebackers at linebacker U, and they think high enough of Abdul Carter that they're going to give him number 11. They said he splashed in fall camp as well, and here's his first action on the field. He was a high school All-American four-star recruit. Your play stopped the game for a potential targeting on the last play. And on his first snap, he will be the subject of the worst rule in college football. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like some incidental contact on the side of a helmet. Well, the problem is, is that in context, he's wondering if this is lateral or not kind of going for the ball and then goes in kind of with the shoulder side of the head and I certainly hope that they don't and we had a chance to during our college football seminar here from Dean Blandino and Mike Herrera and it seems like the targeting it seems like targeting is getting readjusted. Would I be correct in saying well, that? Well, they, they continue to tweak the rules, and no one's better at explaining that than Mike Pereira. And, Mike, you join us now. It, Mike, th this instance seems like it's going to be one of those. Replay review. Personal foul targeting. Defense number 11. We're hit on a defenseless player. 15-yard penalty and automatic first down. Number 11 is this ball. I mean, this is, uh, uh, Mike, I know that you're with us. Like, I just, this, yeah, this one's hard. Down. Joel, I'm, I'm with you because to me, look, at it's defenseless. He's considered defenseless because the pass is incomplete. But the defender really at this point is making a play trying to get to the ball. I mean, I think you have to use some common sense with it. If you take the play literally and look at the fact that if you're defenseless, you can't contact aggressively a contact with the player in the helmet or neck area head or neck area I guess you could put it in that context but to me he's, he's trying to get to that ball watch his left hand I and mean, he's not sure that that pass was ruled either forward or backward so I, I, I I'm with you I understand the rule I think it's helped the game but I'm not strong on that at all and thank you very much Mike and I, you said common sense well, a wise man once said, common sense is not common. And unfortunately, Abdul Carter, 
is out of the game. Yeah, un un unfortunate call. I, t I totally agree with Mike. You know, and, and now you just have to move on. It, it sucks for Penn State. I'm sure Purdue fans think, you know, they're yelling. They want the call. They want the yardage. Abdul Carter's got a bright future ahead of him. He's trying to play aggressive and get to the ball and got the The worst situation possible for a college defender. Second down and two at the 48-yard line. And here's Daru tumbling forward. King Daru stopped by Jonathan Sutherland. And he will gain nine yards on the play. King Doru is their leading rusher coming back over 500 yards a year ago But this is not a team that ran the ball all that effectively In fact, this is one of the things they're really desperately trying to find that complimentary run game They're never gonna dominate people on the ground or, or win games because of their ability to run the football But they're trying to make some tweaks and you're seeing it right here See this pistol set King Doru way back behind Aiden O'Connell. They think Doru is much better from this formation And they'll pitch it back O'Connell winding up over the middle he had a wide open receiver in Payne Durham, but there was pressure by the Nittany Lions. Incomplete. Boy, if he's got one extra beat, he's going to get Payne Durham wide open. Watch here. You got a little bit of the flea flicker. So Doru gets the handoff, then he flips it back to O'Connell, and Payne Durham is blocking that whole time. And if O'Connell can just hold it for another moment, he's going to be able to set his feet and really deliver that on the frame of his tight end. That would have been a huge play. Second down and 10 at the 43. O'Connell again to pass. Near side this time, and it's caught. Once again, his favorite target, Charlie Jones, his fourth catch of the first half. I mean, for, for a couple of guys that are playing their first football game together in like, you know, oh, let, let's call it 10, 15 years, Gus, they look like they're on the same page, same wavelength. A couple of veteran players understand the game. That one was thrown beautifully before Charlie Jones was out of his break, and it was right on the money. Third down and one. At the 34, Jones now with a career high, four catches. Doru, first down, hits the sideline, stays on his feet, and out of bounds. Curtis Jacobs knocks him out of play. Let's go downstairs to Jenny. You guys have been talking about that chemistry between Charlie Jones, Aiden O'Connell. I know you pointed out that they lived about 10 miles from each other in Illinois growing up playing youth sports, but they actually also lived together over the summer. They were working out. They were making sure they were on the same page. They went out and bought a whiteboard to dissect plays. They were relentless. And, you know, this is my favorite quote from Charlie Jones. He came here because Aiden makes plays. He's been making them since the third grade. Wow, how about that, O'Connell? Back shoulder throw. What a at the 10-yard line, he just went up there and ripped it out. Canyon, the junior, and now they call it incomplete. Boy, what an adjustment. He's trying to go back shoulder, and you called him, boy. He comes back and then just unable to secure that ball before it hits the ground. Pretty good defense right there by Johnny Dixon, number three. He's the transfer from South Carolina. But that was almost a sensational catch by Elijah Canyon. Another transfer in here for Purdue on the outside. Second down and long. O'Connell. Quick throw. Looks like a flag should be thrown, and it has been thrown. Johnny Dixon holding up Canyon. And it'll be flagged for it. Pass interference. Defense. Number three. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, I love that adjustment that you saw from Canyon in that last look. He tried to go outside. Johnny Dixon did a great job of shutting down that first look. And so Canyon just jumped back inside, continued up vertically down the field, and forced Johnny Dixon to reach out and grab his jersey. The flag came out, and now Purdue is in business inside the 15. But thus, this is where they struggled a year ago, the red zone. This is where they've got to get better. They need touchdowns, not field goals. Canyon transferring from Auburn. Here's O'Connell, drops it down. Sheffield dives, and he'll pick up a first down. Boy, impressive blocks on the outside out there. Payne Durham came flying from his tight end spot and opened up a bit of a crease for Sheffield as he was diving down inside the five. Still room for a first down, though. Zachy Wheatley with the tackle. Nine-yard reception, second down. 
And they'll call it one yard to go at the three. King Doru back in the backfield for the Boilers. O'Connell hands it off to Rue, looking, bouncing, stiff arming, pitch the corner, touchdown, Boilermakers. The King. Going to see Penn State here get caught moving too far from that linebacker position. Now Doru's got a little bit of a cutback lane because the linebacker on that side, Curtis Jacobs, over pursued. Doru sees the opening and then he's got a clean, easy look at that pylon and he's in for a touchdown. Eight plays, 75 yards. Boilermakers eat up three minutes and 26 seconds. Extra point is good. West Lafayette, Indiana, Purdue, Penn State. Fox College Football is sponsored by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. 10-7. Purdue reclaiming the lead. We've had scores on three straight possessions after starting with three straight punts. King Doru, 533 yards rushing a season ago and two touchdowns. They say he's a terrific chess player. And these two coaches are playing chess with each other right now. James Franklin and Coach Brown. Moving out of the end zone and a flag. Kickoff out of bounds. Kicking team. The ball be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. Pacific Life game summary sponsored by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. Here's what we've seen so far. A lot of questions to be answered for both teams. And so far, Purdue has gotten the better of that. They've found their wide receivers. They've spread it around to try to replace David Bell. Meanwhile, on the Nittany Lions side, Gus, we've been wondering about their run game. Would they be able to run the football? Well, as we stand right now, 14 rushes, averaging under four yards per carry. Each of the three running backs has gotten a series. Kevon Lee, Nick Singleton, and Katron Allen. We'll see where they go here. Back to Lee. First down of the 35. Here's Lee on the ground. Not a lot. Jacob Waldberg, first man to him, a gain of one. Lots of focus in this fall camp on this offensive line. Could they improve? The coaching staff felt like they were better up front. Fashionu on the left tackle side. Tangwall left guard. Juice Gruggs in his mentality. Number 70, the leader up front as the center. But so far, it hasn't panned out. Second down and nine. Lee remains in the game. Clifford to Lee. And he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe another one-yard gain. On the flip side of that, a big question for this Purdue defense, Gus. How do you replace an All-American, a first-round draft pick, defensive end George Karloftis? Well, you do it with a lot of different parts, and they've got experience up front, and now they've got to try to get to the quarterback on a third down. Watch out for Kydron Jenkins, number 44. He's their best pass rusher. He had four sacks. Four and a half a year ago. Third down and eight at the 38. Clifford and a flag underneath incomplete. Closest man to the football, Parker Washington. Well, the, the corner down here on the near side was offside for Purdue, and there was a flag up top. And a couple of fouls. It looks like holding in an offside call. Three fouls on the defense. Offside. 
Defense number one. That penalty is declined. Holding defense number 17. That penalty is declined. Pass interference defense. That penalty is accepted. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. I don't think I've, I don't think I have ever seen three penalties <laughs> on, one play. On, on, on one play on on one side of the ball, and kind of left him off the hook there on that third and long after a couple of nice plays here, and now Penn State across the 50. First down at the 48. Here's Clifford, steps up in the pocket, winds up, down the sideline, and incomplete. No flag on the play. That ball intended for Strange. Nice coverage by Kane. Kane running down the field against Britton Strange, who they've been waiting to come on. This tight end group has been praised by their coach, James Franklin, for a couple of years. He's told me for a couple of years, this is the best tight end group I've ever had. It's the best tight end group I've ever had. It's like, hey, you had Mike Gusecki and Pat Firemuth. You know, we need to see these guys start stepping up and making some catches. And there, some good coverage on the outside. Kane might have gotten away with a little contact. Second down and 10. Clifford, 5 for 10, 60 yards. And it's a run. Lee trying to keep his balance. O.C. Brothers chops him down. Really haven't seen much pressure in Clifford's face. Here's another third down opportunity. We'll see if Purdue can produce something from a pressure standpoint on Clifford, who's been able to stand in the pocket all night long. Penn State, three of six on third down conversions. They're facing a third and six. At the Purdue, 44, Clifford steps up, evades pressure, guns it over the middle, and incomplete. That one broken up by Cam Allen, intended for Tinsley. And the Nittany Lions would be forced to punt. Great job here, right here, by Cam Allen. Cam Allen, the safety, he's going to get depth, but then he straightens up on the field. This is a guy that understands the game of football, lives and breathes it, loves the game. That's what Ron English said, his defensive coordinator and his safety coach. And there he breaks across the face of Mitchell Tinsley and breaks it up on third down. Third punt for Penn State. A more. We'll send it away. Charlie Jones, the deep man inside his own 10. End over end kick. Let's it go over his head with English. Bounces back and dies at the three-yard line. Terrific job by Barney Amore. A 41-yard. Welcome back to West Lafayette. Purdue trying to extend their second lead of the game. Rob Stone here with you. And coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, the backyard brawl is back in business, and it's led by a pair of former USC QBs. Number 12, Oklahoma State, exacting some revenge on an old nemesis. And the guys will join me to discuss who's got the second half edge in this Big Ten slugfest. Guys, we'll see you at the break. All right, thank you very much, Rob. Purdue with the football deep in their own territory. Connell out of the shotgun, pistol formation, and they'll hand it off, Downing. Now, the last time we saw O'Connell before tonight in the Music City Bowl, he threw for 534 yards and five touchdowns, but this is the Big Ten. Yards are a little tougher to come by, partner. Well, they are, and especially against the secondary. And even though Penn State you know, lost their defensive coordinator and a lot of really great players off of that defense, they've still got length and athleticism in that secondary and they present the quarterback you know nomenclature tight windows and it's tough to throw the ball against this nittany lion, nittany lion defense but purdue has done a pretty good job so far nine of 16 104 yards passing for o'connell and he'll throw this one underneath and a drop pass and we've seen that from both teams tonight rock thompson had a clear cut first down have you seen anything different from this Manny Diaz Penn State defense? You know, there have been a couple of creative pressures. There's the drop right there by Brock Thompson. But coming in, I was anticipating that they would have a little bit more aggressiveness. 
Gus, Manny Diaz's history as a defensive coordinator is to bring pressure, bring linebackers, bring pressure, play man coverage. And while that was in the DNA of the Penn State defense last year under Brent Pry, it wasn't quite as frequent. And I feel like they've been more in the Brent Pry style. O'Connell under pressure delivers an incomplete. Marquise Wilson defensively for Penn State. But there was some of the pressure you talked about. And that was a zone pressure. So you're playing zone behind it. It's a bit of an umbrella coverage. And you're bringing an extra defender off the edge, sliding the rest of the defensive line. So there's only actually, Gus, four rushers. The quarterback, you're trying to trick the quarterback into thinking that he's got pressure and get that ball out of his hands. And you saw O'Connell. He was rushed. And he threw the ball high over his intended receiver. Ah, umbrella coverage. That, that's what Notre Dame used last year against Purdue. Well, they used a lot of drive. Eight, and that's why O'Connell struggled against Notre Dame last year. And Marcus Freeman, their defensive coordinator. Washington, the deep man, back pedals. He get a shot. Washington turns a corner, stutter step, still on the move, backs it up, and finally goes down. Solid run. 50-yard punt, 11-yard return. Saturday on Fox, it's a new regime in Sooner country as Coach Brent Venables comes over from Clemson. And star receiver Marvin Mims, they'll lead ninth-ranked Oklahoma as they host UTEP. The action starts at 3.30 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. What do you think about the Sooners going into the season? A lot of change in Norman. So much change, and obviously they have owned the Big 12, you know, for a long time, but... They're replacing the great head coach in Lincoln Riley, their quarterback in Caleb Williams. Uh, you know, a lot of defensive players that no one is talking about, their defensive coordinator. But Brent Venables is a heck of a coach, and he's kind of coming home to a place where he spent a lot of time. Singleton in the game now for Penn State. He'll gain four. That was a really good defensive series for Penn State. Because it was an opportunity, Gus. You get them backed up inside the five. That's the time to get aggressive, and they were able to do that. M Manny Diaz dials up some of those blitzes, a zone pressure in this case, to get the ball back and create some field position for his offense. Second down and six at the 39. Clifford calling the plays at the line of scrimmage. Singleton, the freshman, right next to him. And they'll give it to Singleton. Trying to find some space, and he will not. He'll be tackled for a loss. Well, they'll call it no gain on the play. Boy Jr. will tackle. Richard Jr. from Connecticut. Oh, gosh, another third down. This is feel, It feels like the entire first half has been third down for Penn State, doesn't it? Yes. And Sean Clifford has been okay. Three of seven. Penn State is on third down, and here they face another one. We'll see what Purdue goes with. It looks like they're going to be in man coverage here. We haven't seen Clifford run the football. He's got terrific feet. Third down and six at the 38-yard line. Empty backfield. Clifford steps up, looks, wants to take off, turns a corner. Can he get there? Dives. And let's see. First down. There's those legs, partner, you were talking about, and that's so crucial for a quarterback. In particular, out of that formation. Folks, when you've got an empty formation, that means all your running backs and wide receivers, in this case, five wide receivers are out. You've got nobody back there with you. Those lanes tend to open up. Man coverage by Purdue. Everyone defending their man down the field. And a great dive for the pylon as he's able to get over the line to gain. First down. Birth the 32-yard line for Penn State. Here's the run. Singleton. And he's quickly learning, partner. He's not in high school. Either. Well, I, I'd love to see them back him up, okay? So, it, you know, it's a very certain type of back that has the patience and vision and burst to run the ball successfully out of the shotgun formation just standing next to his quarterback. He's the type of guy, he's got so much electricity downhill. I'd love to see them get him back there eight yards and get him downhill aimed at the tackle and let that violent style running take place. Seven carries, 24 yards. For Nick Singleton. Clifford. Dumps it off underneath. Nice catch. Strange. And another first down for the Nittany Lions. And there's the tight end group that we're seeing. 
Great route by Strange. Founds himself wide open. And Clifford did a great job manipulating the pocket. So he steps up. There's his tight end. And it's a big completion for another first down. And now this offense starting to find a rhythm. And their veteran quarterback, more specifically, partner, starting to find a rhythm. First down at the 21 of Purdue for Penn State. Singleton in motion out of the backfield. They dropped it off near side. Tinsley looking for a crease. And Crinsley, Tinsley rather, will pick up four yards on the play. Clyde Washington with the tackle. Second down and six. Play fake. Clifford in the end zone and incomplete. Looks like some miscommunication going on there. There is a flag, however. Harrison Wallace was your intended target. Well, Clifford got hit low in the backfield. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. That's Lawrence Johnson. So he's in that passing posture, and then you see Johnson goes low, and Penn State is lucky that that didn't do some damage. I mean, that looks terrible. On that left leg, you can see he gets spun down, grimace, but he's able to get up, and then he gave a thumbs up to his bench almost right away. He stays on the field, and we've seen now a couple of times a penalty help out this Nittany Lion offense, and now... They are in business. Remember, last time they were down here, who'd they find? The transfer, Mitchell Tinsley, number five. First down and goal for Penn State. Down 10-7. to seven. Two thirty-one to play in the first half. And Singleton. It's a nice run there to get to the two. Stopped by Cam Allen, a six-yard gain. This is when you put your back back there a little bit deeper and you let him get downhill. You know, you get inside the two. Now you're talking about attitude, and this is a program that talked all offseason about getting an attitude in the run game. You got an extra offensive lineman in right here, number 72 on the left side, and three guys in the backfield. T formation, second and goal at the two. Quarterback sneak. And it's a touchdown. Sean Clifford bulls his way into the end zone. And Penn State takes a 13 to 10 lead. Well, I'll give the assist to Brenton Strange, number 86. The tight end lines up actually as the fullback right here. And watch, he's just going to block his quarterback and push him into the end zone Brady's going crazy over there now it's legal wasn't legal when Reggie did it for Matt they didn't call it that's fine but there's the bush push and he pushes him into the end zone great job by Brendan Strange and good rhythm by Sean Clifford showing some toughness getting that ball into the end zone Penn State goes on an eight play 57 yard drive six runs on the drive Pinnaker for the extra point and it's good 14 to 10 144 to play in the first half the Cincinnati kid giving his team the lead like Quinn Reggie Bush Matt Leiter and coach Meyer are standing by with the State Farm halftime show right here from Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette Indiana opening night a scoring drive eight plays 43 yards And they score 430. Clifford with the two-yard run. Capitalizing on that good field position. You know, great sequence there by Penn State. They had the punt downed inside the five. Defense gets a three and out. Offense gets good field position. And they punch it in. Wusu sends it away. Charlie Jones, the deep man. And this one boomed by Gabriel Wusu. Monarch is television's most anticipated new drama, the first family of country music will do anything to protect their legacy, starring the great, incomparable Susan Sarandon, Trace Atkins, and Ann Friel. Don't miss the unforgettable series premiere of Monarch Sunday, September 11th, after football on Fox.
Gus Johnson, Joel Flack, Jenny Taft. 14 to 10 now. Let's see how Purdue responds as they will start from their own 25. O'Connell, today is his birthday. 24 years old. Married a couple of months ago. Here's O'Connell. Slings it underneath. Caught. And a nice gain. All first down for the Boilers. Rice with the reception. Boy, he's so good on those slants. Speaking of O'Connell, isn't he? I mean, that ball is right on the frame. It's on the money. He's very accurate on those in-breaking routes. And they'll give it to Doru. Looking for the first down. Gets outside. Turns it up. Picks up the first. And goes down. As he gains seven yards on the play. Nicely done. He seems like he's finding a rhythm. Adisa Isaac with the tackle. And plenty of time here, minute 17 and counting, but clock stopping with first downs, and they've got all three of their timeouts left. Coddle, double pumps it, sideline, nice throw, great catch with space. How about this? Purdue, Mershawn Rice with a 26-yard gain. That little double clutch by O'Connell in the pocket. He wanted his tight end, 87. Payne Durham and that got the defense to bite. They jumped inside, left them outside wide open, and it's a huge completion. First down at the Penn State 33. O'Connell underneath incomplete. Rice again the target, but a flag. There's no foul for ineligible downfield. The ball was tipped. It's second down. Jeff Brom, 51 years old, sixth year at Purdue. He spent three at Western Kentucky. He was an NFL quarterback, folks. This is one of the greatest high school football players in the history of the state of Kentucky. Coming off that 9-4 and four season, best for Purdue since... Joe Tiller went 9-4 in 2003 with Kyle Orton. Second and 10 at the 34. O'Connell plants, throws, nice job, Durham. Close to the first down. Didn't get it, so the clock runs. 36 seconds left. Well, they wasted a little bit of time there before they got the timeout. So 35 ticks left, but a good series here from O'Connell and the Boilermakers, down 14-10. 14-10, Penn State with the lead on the road against Purdue. Boilermakers have two timeouts remaining. 35 seconds on the game clock. Scoring inside the red zone even though they're at the around the right inside the 25 yard line has been a problem in terms of touchdowns for this purdue team dating back to last year yeah, they were able to on that, that last series and really got a rhythm in the run game but with only 35 seconds left you, you know you don't want to hand the ball off here certainly you got a couple of tight ends in now and they'll spread it out for o'connell empty backfield for aiden o'connell third down and one and they'll hand it off on the end around. Sheffield lost it. Does Penn State have it? Yes, they do. Joey Porter with the fumble recovery. Boy, running the jet sweep from this formation is tough. Watch what I'm about to talk about. You've got this. Both tight ends, they were back off the line of scrimmage, Gus. Did you see that? Yes. And so when you bring the jet sweep across that motion, he's further back in the backfield than you want him if you're the, the center's going to be under center and try to turn around and hand him. That's why he was trying to reach. And I don't think Sheffield ever really got that ball cleanly. I think a lot of it had to do with the formation. Those tight ends were lined up as kind of wing backs so they could try to get around the edge, but the motion was too far behind the quarterback. And Zachy Wheatley was the man that dislodged the football for Penn State. First turnover of the game. And that's exactly what Penn State was able to do a year ago. 
I know, again, like it's not technically in the red zone, but when you get into the scoring territory, this is what their defense did. They were dominant down there. They had 11 takeaways on drives when the opponent reached the 40-yard line. That was tied for the fourth Purdue most in college football. The ruling on the field that the defender was inbounds when he recovered the ball will review the play. Timeout, Purdue. So they'll be looking over it. I believe it was Joey Porter over there, if yep. I'm not mistaken, partner. And he was the one right there, like a third baseman, ready to catch this ground ball. Boy, Zachy Wheatley, how about that? Knocks it out, and now is, is Porter in? It looks like he is. Mike Pereira joins us. Mike, your thoughts on this play? Yeah, Gus, and listen, I, I understand why they would look at it because there is a little bit of a bobble, and so it's a question of did he get control of the ball before any part of the body was out of bounds, After and really, the with his shot, confirmed. nothing got out of bounds. The defender was in bounds. Purdue's charged their second timeout. I may not challenge the remainder of the game. I, I just think that that was a function of the formation. You know, I... You, I Everyone will remember this name, Jeremy Bloom. Do you guys remember Jeremy Bloom? Yeah, he was Bloom. your teammate. Yeah, he was my teammate. Olympic skier as well. And he's a speedster, man. And he was great on that little jet sweep. You know, Mike Riley has made that famous with guys like, you know, uh, uh, oh, I'm blanking their name up at Oregon State right now. But you know what I'm talking about, those jet sweeps. I know when you're under center as a quarterback and you're trying to time up that motion and get the handoff, it's difficult to do. Clifford winding up, going deep. And incomplete flag on the play. Mitchell Tinsley was the intended receiver. Reese Taylor in coverage for Purdue. Pass interference. Defense number one. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Reese Taylor's a grad transfer from Indiana, and here he just gets there way too early. You know. I didn't think Tinsley had a great chance at that ball. I, I don't think it was a, a great throw because you can see it's behind him. That being said, it's close enough, and that contact was certainly early. And so Penn State gets bailed out there by the contact from Reese Taylor and gets a free 15. 22 seconds to play here in the first half. 14 to 10. Penn State first down at the 33-yard line for Sean Clifford. And the Nittany Lions. Clifford backs up. Off his back foot, throws it incomplete. Tinsley again the target. Clifford had to retreat in the pocket because there was a little bit of pressure, and that was like a fadeaway. Unfortunately for him, it wasn't a fadeaway from the baseline. <laughs> you see his release. Watch him as he... Gets a little bit of pressure, and right there, he retreats and throws a bit of a fadeaway, and it just never got to his intended target, Mitchell Tinsley. Jackson Sullivan with pressure, second and ten. Empty backfield for Clifford. Clifford dancing around, directing traffic. Oh, what a nice throw and a great catch by Strange. Still running. Strange. Down the sideline, touchdown, Penn State, 67 yards. That is a great individual effort from Britton Strange. And I tell you what, Shaw Clifford looked like a dancer on that throw. He had those feet going in the pocket. He gets himself outside of the pocket. Here, watch Strange. He's actually going to leave the playing field, but he kind of gets bumped right here and knocked out. Then he's able to reestablish himself. Far side official threw his hat off, acknowledging that he had stepped out, but he's still legal there because he had been contacted to go out. Then he reestablishes, and he's a legal receiver at that point. Clifford finds him, and then what a great run after the catch. I told you that James Franklin has been telling me for two years this is the best tight end room he's ever had. I've been like, you're crazy, coach. You had Pat Fryermuth and Mike Gusecki, and I saw those dudes, and they were dudes. And Brenton Stredge says, hold my drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh my 
Longest reception of Strange's career. Extra point is good. So Penn State, electric drive. Two plays, 82 yards in 28 seconds. There's a happy tight end right there. Britton Strange, the redshirt junior from West Virginia. And think about just the wild change in this game. It's 14-10. Purdue gets a couple of really nice plays in that two-minute situation because they're driving down the field. I think they get into an unfortunate formation, and all of a sudden, bang, turnover. There's Joey Porter. Wheatley knocks it out. Porter stays in bounds. Turnover. And rather than just say, hey, we're up 14-10, what do you do? We got a six-year quarterback. Let's let him cut it loose. And they be, they get aggressive down the field. Clifford finds his tight end. That's a great individual effort right there. He had a little bit of a piano. Do you see that? Do you see him kind of hitch up like that? <laughs> and then he realizes, like, I can't get caught if I'm wide open right now. And that is a huge swing of emotion and momentum in this game. Penn State now up 21-10. Britton Strange, all Big Ten honorable mention a season ago after catching 20 balls for 225 yards and three touchdowns. Off to a good start. Opening night for the Nittany Lions. Charlie Jones deep. And Jones will bring it out of the end zone. And upended as he crosses the 10. DeLuca with the tackle on special teams. Joey Porter with the fumble recovery. Big time electric play for the Nittany Lions at the end of the first half. Don't forget, after the break, join Rob Stone and the guys with the State Farm Halftime Show right here from ross Ace Stadium. 21-10, our score at the break. Welcome back to... West Lafayette, Indiana, and we're ready to start the second half. Penn State leading on the road 21 to 10 against Purdue. Gus Johnson and Joel Klatt, welcome back to West Lafayette and JK. It was a pretty evenly fought first half yeah. until the very end. Yeah, it really was. And I, I think you give a lot of credit to the resilience of Penn State. And I say that because in that first quarter, it wasn't looking great. But in the second quarter, their quarterback, Sean Clifford, he got going. And that's where we start with the second half connection. Sponsored by AT&T Business, AT&T 5G, fast, reliable, and secure. There was the first touchdown to Mitchell Tinsley as he was able to get into the end zone. Then you got a little assist from Strange as he pushed his quarterback in. That was the big turnovers there, as Coach pointed out. And just the huge swing in momentum. Momentum as Strange got that 67-year yard touchdown and a great, great individual effort running down that sideline but it happened so quickly Gus that was a pretty evenly matched first half and you got the sense that Purdue was even going down to maybe take the lead going into that half and then boom boom James Franklin's bunch with that athleticism and explosion they roll off a turnover and a touchdown and now Jeff Brom has an 11-point deficit. Clifford accounted for all three Penn State touchdowns. Touchdown passes to Mitchell Tinsley. Britton Strange and a two-yard run of his own as Penn State takes that 21-10 halftime lead. It's the 15th time in his career that he's accounted for at least three touchdowns in a game. So we will see how Purdue responds. They fumble the ball, recovered by Joey Porter, and they were... It, at least it looked like they were heading into the end zone or at least a field goal. And so the Nittany Lions will kick it off to start the second half. Purdue will receive. That's why Purdue should not panic. They've been moving the football. They've got to stick with their guns, in particular on that offensive side. And just hammering away at that Penn State defense. Charlie Jones, the deep man. Wusu will send it away. And Wusu, another booming kick out of the end zone. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. Well, and speaking with Jeff Brom just now, he actually pointed that out. He doesn't want his guys to panic. He wants them to play more aggressive, take some shots. We're playing a good football team. we got to stay in this thing because those last two minutes of the half were so telling. James Franklin, he was clearly pleased with the way the half ended, but he pointed out we have to finish. The way we started, we weren't finding our rhythm. we got to continue to do that. He's pleased with what
what he's seeing from Manny Diaz and that defense. But this game is far from over. He said Purdue's QB. He's super accurate. We know he's not going anywhere. All right, so Purdue starts first down and 10. At the 25, Doru in the backfield. They'll give it to him on first down. Breaks a tackle, spinning. And is finally gang tackled. He'll pick up two yards. Elston with the tackle for the Nittany Lions. Well, we just saw this. How about this? Sean Clifford jogging back to the locker room. The sixth-year veteran quarterback, and now the five-star quarterback, true freshman, Drew Aller is warming up on the sideline for Penn State. We will certainly follow that as this series develops here for Purdue. Second down and eight. O'Connell underneath. Charlie Jones again with the first down. I tell you, Charlie Jones is sizzling, folks. Chuck Sizzle, another big catch. That's 10 yards, and he's having a career night. Yeah, it's like, for Charlie Jones, it was like the first couple of catches, the Iowa fans were happy for him. And now they're like, now they're like okay, okay, like, we don't need to see this that left our program. And he's done a heck of a job. Five catches now, a 69 yards, 13.8 a pop. Well, first, on O'Connell over the middle and caught again. again. This time it's its tight end, Payne Durham. And you get the feeling that Purdue is going to come out guns blazing this second half. Well, remember now, the last game they played, they played a really good Tennessee team in the bowl game. In Nashville, by the way, the Music City Bowl. They were down to 21-7 in that first quarter, and they just kept chipping away. This offense eventually threw for over 500 yards in that ball game. There's no quit in this group. And remember, they've got their own veteran, savvy, no panic style quarterback in Aiden O'Connor. First down at the 48 yard line. Opening series for Purdue. And this is Doru. Nice run, but a flag. Let's see. I thought there was some movement there from the offense. Formationally there. I don't I don't think there was illegal formation by players in the backfield. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. And you were right, but the big story to start this second half, folks, Clifford headed into the locker room. Remember, he kind of tweaked his knee at the end of the first half. And this young man, Aller, is supposed to be potentially a Ben Roethlisberger type. Well, they call him that because he's 6'5", 245 pounds, and he's just a true freshman. First and 15. O'Connell dumps it over the middle, and it's caught by Charlie Jones. Chuck Sizzle does it again. Here's what I love about Aiden O'Connell. Watch him anticipate this area of the field. He's going to get a route, an inside breaking route, and he just hits that back step, and boom, before Chuck Sizzle is out of his break, he lets that ball fly, and then there comes that inside breaking route. Screaming across the field, and it's right on time and right on target. That a gain of 22. He's got six catches for 91 yards in his first game playing for the Boilers. Here's the handoff. Doru got downhill. Stopped by Elsden, but it's a gain of seven. On a per rush basis last year, Purdue averaged 2.8 yards per carry. Gus, you know what that was good for in college football? Dead last. Dead last. And, and you get the sense that they were like, well, we're going to be better running the ball. We don't have to be great, but we're going to be better. And they've been better so far tonight. Averaging 4.2 yards per carry, second and three at the 28. Kobe Lewis in it running back now. O'Connell underneath and incomplete. That one dislodged Tracy, the intended receiver, but Keaton Ellis knocked it out of his hands. Looked like that ball was accurately thrown again, but Keaton Ellis right there. And now a third down here for O'Connell in this Boilermaker offense. First third down of this drive. Boilers, one for five on third down com uh, conversions. Third down and three at the 28. You better know where, what'd you call him? Chuck Sizzle? Chuck Sizzle, he's hot. You better know where he's at. And they've got their best corner on him. Top of your screen is the matchup. There's Charlie Jones. There's Joey Porter. Did they get it off? Yes. O'Connell, underneath, caught. 
First down and more. Brock Thompson finally racked up at the 12. But it's a 17-yard gain. Joey Porter with the tackle. Well, they're bringing the crossing route from the left side. And what happens here, the middle linebacker, that's Elston for Penn State. He just gets caught just sitting there. He doesn't have any momentum going over to his left side, and he gets run past. And at that point, it's a big completion and a first down. Hard hit here by Porter. Boy, Porter is just a physical, physical defender. And that's why, you know, those the NFL personnel love him. And there was a lot of scouts here tonight before the game. As Thompson slow getting up. You can see Porter is unafraid to take, stick his face right in there and rally up and make tackles. I, I used to call a lot of his father's games, especially when he was with the Steelers. Mm. Joey Porter was just a wonderful, yeah. athletic, violent player. Yeah, I used to watch Joey when he was at Colorado State. My dad would take me up there. I grew up in the Denver area and take me up there as Thompson limping off the field. Hopefully he's okay, but take me to watch Joey Porter Sr. And Sonny Lubick had some great teams up there. In fact, do you know who was one of Sonny Lubick's first ass assistant coaches up at Colorado State? There's Joey. There's Joey. Who was one of his first ever been my Coach was Sonny Lubick there at Colorado State and Fort Collins and produced Joey Porter, who then had Joey Porter Jr. And now this kid has become a fabulous player. Rock certainly has a bright future ahead of him. Brock Thompson has to be helped off after that quarter tackle. First down and goal at the 10-yard line for Purdue. King Doru in the backfield. Here's O'Connell swings it out. That ball deflected in the backfield, incomplete. Looked like Keaton Ellis got a hand on it. Well, and there's that Manny Diaz pressure, okay? Here's where the new defensive coordinator starts putting his stamp on the game. Comes in, remember the head coach at Miami. Here he comes in, and now you're getting the pressure, okay? So it's a good drive, but now he gets Ellis up the field, screaming off the edge, and O'Connell is trying to throw that ball quickly out to the left side, but Ellis is right there to bat it down. Second down and goal at the end. O'Connell throws the fade, back shoulder incomplete, but a flag. Jones, the intended receiver, Joey Porter in coverage. Pass interference, defense, number nine. By rule, the ball be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. That is such a good throw and a great adjustment. Here's the key for Charlie Jones. He's got to bust it up the field as if he's getting the ball at the back pylon. Then he can drop out and catch the back shoulder fade. The key is the effort in the first five or six steps. He gives it, and that's why Porter is caught where he has to grab with that right hand, throws his arms up, but that's a clear pass interference. And now Purdue's got first and goal, Gus. So first and goal at the two. Can the Boilermakers pay it off? Daru, the deep back. They pitch it to him. Daru cuts it up. Dives. Touchdown. Purdue. And the Boilermakers receive the ball to start the second half. Marching right down the field for six. Musa, the extra offensive line, comes in right over there on that right side and then they get the pitch on the sweep and he does a great job they get the edge blocked up good job on the outside creating just a little bit of a crease and doru he has been running with some urgency tonight and gets into the end zone as there's an injured boilermaker on the far side and that looks like number 64 norzak excuse me number 64 musa he was the extra offensive lineman, Gus, that they brought in to play that tight end position. They'll be looking at that right leg. Muhammad Musa from Indianapolis, a sophomore, played in a couple of games last year. And this, this run game has 
certainly improved. And you got to give a lot of credit to Doru, who clearly is running with some energy. And you got to give some credit also to the coaching staff. Because one thing that they did, Gus, is, is they did a deep dive, Jeff Brom did, on the style of runs in which his running backs, the personnel, can succeed. Doru, heavy downhill. So they backed him up, and it's paid off. Touchdown, Purdue, 21-16. As Purdue scores on their opening series of the second half to make it a 21-16 game, they went nine plays covering 75 yards. Center and end to attempt the extra point. And we may have a new quarterback coming into the game for Penn State when they get the ball after this kick. Extra point up and good. 21-17, 11-16 to play in the third. The biggest sporting event on the planet returns to Fox Sports, and for the first time ever, it's taking over the holiday season. The FIFA World Cup, live from Qatar, starting November 20th on Fox and FS1. So the young man, true freshman, Aller. Warmed up. He was the jewel of Penn State's 2022 recruiting class. Shows Penn State over Ohio State, Michigan, and Notre Dame. He was named Ohio Player of the Year after completing 60% of his passes for guess what, folks? 4,444 yards and 48 touchdowns as a senior at Medina High School, rushing for nine more touchdowns. He threw for 9,103 yards and 98 touchdowns in his prep career. Dad Kevin was the tight end at Eastern Michigan from 1992 to 1997. And this is who many Penn State fans feel that they've been waiting for. And this one brought out of the end zone Singleton. And Singleton hit, breaks a tackle, cross forward, and gets to the 20. We don't know for sure if this is what happened to Sean Clifford, but let's take a look back. First half, Clifford takes a hard hit, grabs that left knee. And it was certainly awkward, and you see he rolled up on that. They get the flag. They ended up scoring. He would stay in the game. Execute pretty well, by the way. Ended up scoring. Now, though, it's Drew Aller, and folks, this guy can spin the pill. I mean, it is as pretty as you will ever see. First down and 10 to 19. They hand it off. Allen tries to cut it up, and he's knocked down. Doesn't get much. Jenkins make that Taylor with the tackle, as well as Jenkins. Penn State was on Aller early in the recruiting process, Gus. In fact, his first offer was when he was just a three-star, but he just kept rising up the recruiting boards, and he kept never wavering in his commitment to Penn State, ultimately wound up in some cases as the number one quarterback in the class, and here he is on the field for the Nittany Lions. Drew Aller, first pass as the Nittany Lion, Lambert Smith. Jitterbugs his way up the field and picks up the first down, a gain of 11. And now all the pressure is on Mike Yursich, the offensive coordinator, finding the concepts that Aller is comfortable with and maintaining some confidence and momentum with this offense, finding him those easy completions and the ability for him to see the defense in a clear manner. First and 10 of the 31-yard line. Aller will throw it. Steps up, buys time. On the run and caught out of bounds. Mitchell Tinsley with the reception. And Aller is a big boy, 6'5", 242. He's never going to kill you with his legs, but he's certainly nimble enough and manipulates the pocket well, in particular for a big player. They liken him a little bit, as you said earlier, Ben Roethlisberger, but man, I, I got to be honest. There, I just sat there in warm-ups, and Gus, you sat there with me, and I was just... I was just watching him throw the ball in awe. It's so effortless. So it comes out of his hand, the strength with which he throws, and yet he doesn't need his entire body to create that velocity. The ball just explodes out of his hands. The future of Penn State football right here before your eyes, folks. Aller, Allen, Singleton. Get excited, Penn State fans, because you've got years of excitement ahead of you. Second down and seven. 
21-17. Play fake. Aller. Back foot. Let's it go. In a pocket. Incomplete. But it was on the money. Warren. Had it in his hands, just couldn't hold on. I mean, ball's thrown perfectly. Warren's got to make that catch. He certainly knows that. Theo Johnson not available to them. Their normal backup tight end. Down to the third guy, Tyler Warren, who's unable to bring that in. But look at that ball. Beautifully thrown over the underneath defender and in front of the deep defender. But now a third down. Third down and seven at the 49. Katron Allen in the backfield. The new freshman. Allen looking, surveying, steps up, lets it go, incomplete. Tinsley, the intended receiver, that brings up fourth down, and Penn State will have to punt it away. Okay, so there's your first learning experience. Aller steps up in the pocket, but watch all the man coverage. You've got crossing routes coming, and all the defenders are running with Nittany Lions, and at that point, see right here, you get the linebacker out of that area. He needs to run and go ahead and just take that first down. Gus, he'll watch that film and say, oh, that's what it looks like. So every moment of this kid's career right now is a learning experience in his first time on the field. Charlie Jones signaling for the fair catch, lets it go over his head. Oh, look at the English on that punt. I tell you what, Barney Amore has been wonderful this evening. And they're going to call it a touchback. Oh, my goodness. Gus, the punt team knocked it into the end zone. Amor's like, what are you doing? Look at this. It's, it's going to die. It's going to die. It's going to die. And uh, it's not. <laughs> oh, God. Fox. The last time Purdue beat Penn State was in 2004, led by Kyle Orton. The Boilermakers were ranked in the top 10. Taylor Stubblefield. Currently, Penn State's wide receivers coach caught a 40-yard touchdown in the second half to give Purdue the 20-13 win. Since then, Penn State has won nine straight versus the Boilers. And now Stubbs is on the other sideline coaching with Coach Franklin. I'm thinking to himself, okay, how do we get guys open for our young freshman quarterback? First down and 10 at the 20-yard line. And this ball caught off first down. Looks like Charlie Jones again, a gain of three. And here's a question, Joel. Can O'Connell take Purdue down the field again? He's used multiple weapons. Five boilers with two or more catches tonight, led by Jones with a career-high seven. Doru has given them a two touchdowns, the second multi-touchdown game of his career today. Well, they've been able to move the ball already 280 yards so far, and they've been able to move the ball most of the night. So, you know, this is a, a, a veteran guy that certainly is capable of doing it. Second and seven, big throw down the field for Jones. And this time it's thrown a little high. Porter in coverage. And Porter and Jones having a nice little one-on-one -on -one battle tonight. I love it. I love it. These guys are getting after it out there. Jones certainly holding his own. And you can say the same for Joey Porter Jr. But now on a third down, you know, what has been really effective for Purdue is bringing guys on in-breaking routes, either from the outside or the crossing routes from the slot receivers. And the linebackers in second level for Penn State have not done a great job defending them. The two of six on third down conversions. McConnell guns it underneath that one thrown behind Charlie Jones. Porter in the vicinity. And the Boilers will have to send it away. He's trying that inside breaking route, but watch the coverage right here from Joey Porter Jr. He's trying to get this route thrown right here, and we've seen it a couple of different times. He's trying to throw it on time, but he throws it a little bit behind, and Porter is underneath that route. That is excellent coverage. He knows he's got deep help by the safety, and he puts himself in perfect position to defend that pass on third down. Two three and outs for Purdue this evening. Jack Ansel sends it away. Parker Washington ready to return. He backpedals, catches it, and is wrapped up at the 20-yard line. No, he got out of it on his feet. Cuts it up with a block down the sideline. What a run. Jack Ansel, the punter, had to bring him down. A 17-yard return the hard way. 
I still can't believe he didn't touch the ground. He spins out of it, keeps his knees up. First down, Penn State across the 45. Sponsored by Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Welcome back. As you look at our score, 21-17, to 17, they're going to bring this ball back to them. Yeah, because that right there, forearm, was down on the turf. He kept his knees up, shins up, but that forearm clearly down on the turf. They took a second look at that. Replay brought it back, and now it'll be at the 21-yard line. 26-yard difference from where we thought the ball was going to be. A 17-yard return is now minus 9. Clifford's back in the game for Penn State. Clifford delivers up top and incomplete. And that one thrown high. Chris Jefferson defending. Trying to go to that second tight end. Tyler Warren again. Certainly that ball thrown high. And we'll see how effective Clifford can be here. He has dealt with injuries his entire career. Injured his ribs, which was the big one last year in the Iowa game in Iowa City. And just a similar feel too. remember that big lead they had 17-3 ranked number four in the country and just kind of all fell apart after that for Penn State down the stretch second and ten at the 21 Nittany Lions go empty trips at the top twins at the bottom Clifford incomplete Lambert Smith that ball thrown low well, third down, Purdue has been unable to really present a lot of pressure on Clifford. And he's been able to sit in the pocket. Now, Penn State's only four of nine on third down. Well, this is a big opportunity for this Purdue defense to try to get off the field, get their veteran quarterback back out there as quickly as they can. Third down and 10 at the 21. Clifford looking bouncing Clifford trying to square his shoulders and he'll just throw this one out of bounds and there is a flag on the play Holding defense number seven Down. That's Jamari Brown. And Brown was working against Brenton Strange. Watch 86, the tight end. He's going to try to break outside. And then there's that outside arm, the left arm from Brown, who's just tugging on that shoulder. And that's why the flag comes out. Certainly, Penn State getting some holding pass interference that have extended some drives. And they get it again here. First down at the 31. Kevon Lee in the backfield. And they give it to Lee. And Kevon Lee wrestled down. Sindor with the tackle. That's after gain of five. Good second effort by Lee because he had a Purdue defender right in his face. It was Prince James Boyd, number 93, was in the backfield quickly. He had to hop out of his way. He ended up gaining five. Second down at five. Here comes a blitz. They get in the backfield and they tackle Lee for a loss. They shot it. Johnson, Kieran Douglas combining on the tackle. Well, here you're going to get the linebacker blitz, and they're just coming straight right in that A gap, right next to the center. And he times it up perfectly. A mistake by Sal Warmly, the right guard, 77. He just took that little step to the right, and that allows Purdue to get into the backfield and now force a longer yardage third down situation. Third down and seven. First tackle for a loss by the Purdue defense tonight. Clifford winds up underneath. Incomplete. 
Harrison Wallace, the intended receiver. That ball thrown low, and I don't know. Can Clifford really step into his throws with that knee, with that tender knee? Well, and look at the tight window he's trying to complete this pass into. This is really good defense. Zone coverage by Purdue, and all those eyes on Clifford as he's trying to fit that ball kind of in the Bermuda Triangle right there between three black jerseys, and he's unable to do it. So Clifford 0 for 3 in his return after missing a series. Jones deep. Catches it at the 20 and is wrapped up immediately. A 46-yard punt. Daquan Hardy with the tackle on special teams. M. Eastern only on Fox. Well, this is what these two programs have done since that national championship game. Remember, Colt McCoy gets injured. Mark Ingram and the Tide go on to win that. And since that day, folks, <laughs> Bama has been the best college football program in the history of the sport. O'Connell, sideline, first down, nice run. Rice still on the move and finally tracked down from behind after a 27-yard gain. What a great effort from Rice after the catch. He's able to stay on his feet and fight for extra yardage. Now all the way up near the 50. Great run and secures that ball. You see a couple of Nittany Lions there flying in trying to rip at that football, but he's able to secure it. First down at the 45-yard line. 40. Play action. O'Connell sets up with time. Drop with off in the flats. Doru. And Doru. Tackle taken down quickly. Wilson with the stop. That's a gain of two. You know, the, the rhythm with this Purdue offense, I felt like was best when they were really mixing it up, Gus. And they were getting Doru deep in that backfield, getting some run game going, then going to the play action off of that. All the while knowing that Aiden O'Connell at any moment can just stand up and take the easy completion. And because of that, look at this defense. See all these Nittany Lions right up in the face of the wide receiver trying to take away the easy pitch and catch. Second down and eight. O'Connell again. Far side. Incomplete. Rice the target. Johnny Dixon coverage. No flag on the play. Well, that was close because John with Dixon right here watch him working against rice and he gets away with a little tug right at the top of the route right there see that tug absolutely got away with it and in particular in a game in which Purdue seems like they have given Penn State first down after first down with a defensive penalty looks like Johnny Dixon got away with one there Seen a lot of holding from both sides in the secondary Third down and eight at the 47. McConnell over the middle. Caught first down and more. And this time, it's T.J. Sheffield with a 14-yard pickup. If you're going to bring the blitz, watch right here. You're going to get the blitz from Purdue. Everybody's coming. You've got to defend tight to the inside because those routes are breaking inside. They're called sight adjusts. Gus, that means that that wide receiver, he sees that blitz, and he's just going to break his route right where that blitz vacated. The quarterback knows it, and for a veteran quarterback, that is easy pickings. That's not the defense you want to call on a critical third down. First down of the 39. And he'll stay on the ground. King Doru is a four-yard pickup. He's getting a lot of work tonight. Uh, he's been pretty effective. You know, only 10 carries, Gus, but they've thrown it to him a few times as well. And you think about four and a half yards per carry for Doru after a year in which this team was last in college football, averaging 2.8 yards per carry as a team. Charlie Jones gets his helmet back. Looks like he'll go back into the game. Second down and six. Doru again crawling forward close to the first down. I don't think he has it. P.J. Mustafer with the tackle. He went down. Mustafer in the Iowa game last year. And with Clifford and Mustafer out, one of the best offensive players, one of the best defensive players. It really affected the Penn State seats. And Mustafer is not just a great player. He's also a great leader and really the voice of the defense. Of and as he began to get healthy and back on the field, they felt like they saw a, a dramatic rise in the play of this unit. 
uh, throughout fall camp as he became more healthy and more dominant. Third down and short. They need a yard. Downing in the game. O'Connell throw it, drops it off incomplete. Wow. Well, I think they might go for this, but this is really tough as a quarterback. Watch as O'Connell's going to back out of this, Gus, and he's got to flip because he's going to give a play action. Now he's got to flip all the way back around, get the left shoulder pointed to the target, and then throw. I think that's why it was inaccurate. But Jeff Brom is going to keep his offense on the field. O'Connell will stay out there on a fourth down, and Purdue will go for it. We'll start in the shotgun. Fourth down and one. Here's O'Connell throwing over the middle caught first down Durham still moving and he's down at the seven yard line a 22 yard gain on fourth down and one well here's Durham right here and he's locked in man coverage against that safety but the best part of this play is as you get an, an out route you're going to get the flat defender out there and then you're going to bring the Texas or this Little angle route back into the middle of the field, and that's Durham, and he's wide open on an easy fourth down completion. First down and goal at the seven. Doru back in the game after limping onto the sideline. Play clock winding down, get it away. Option. Doru takes the pitch. Great pursuit by Penn State's defense. Not a chance. Led by Jonathan, Jonathan Sutherland. You know what I love from Sutherland there? As he understood the personnel. Now, there's some Nittany Lions down. Curtis Jacobs, fabulous linebacker, is still down with Sutherland right there, number zero. Sutherland knew O'Connell wanted no part of keeping that ball, so he just took off immediately out to the back. And here is that collision at the end as they all collide at the ball carrier, and Doru is brought down by about four Nittany Lions. Curtis Jacobs, the injured Nittany Lion. As they move him to his back. And he was changing positions, linebacker positions this year. And a guy that they really needed to play great football he was the top recruit of the 2020 class remember abdul carter was ejected from the game for targeting he's his curtis jacobs backup that's right and so now they're going to be struggling with depth james franklin knows it they're trying to rotate at at the middle linebacker spot between tyler elston and kobe keen so penn state now getting very thin at linebacker with jacobs slowly getting up off the turf Hopefully he will be okay as they help him up. Some feel that Jacobs will be the next great linebacker at linebacker U. Big Ten honorable mention as a freshman from Glen Burnie, Maryland. And now they are thin there at linebacker. So second down and goal from the seventh, tenth play of the drive coming up. Downing next to O'Connell in the backfield. Tracy in motion. O'Connell with time. Touchdown, Purdue. Chuck Sizzle. Charlie Jones. What a night. That's why I came to Purdue. I wanted to play with my boy. This route took a long time to develop, and he got great protection, Gus, and was able to sit in the pocket and wait for Charlie to cross all the way across the field and find the opening for the touchdown. 
Fitterin with the extra point. That is good. Ten plays covering 81 yards. O'Connell to Charlie Jones. Jones now with eight catches for 101 yards and a touchdown. Well, it starts up front. And if you're going to bring a guy all the way across, right, if this is the route and you're trying to get him all the way across the field, you better have great protection and they get it. Watch Downing 38 as he comes across and gets a good block right there on Mustafer that allows for a little extra time. Now it's on O'Connell to anticipate and get that ball out in front of him on that left side as they're turned around in the back end. Zaki Wheatley takes a bit of a bad angle and there's Charlie Jones, two feet down, touchdown Boilermakers and a 24-21 lead. O'Connell, six of seven on the drive, 71 yards. Land with his good friend, childhood friend on his 24th birthday. You just knew that there wasn't going to be any panic in this Purdue team. Remember the last game they played, 21-7 to Tennessee. They come back and they win that game. And they they felt like they controlled a bit of the first half. They didn't need to change anything. That's exactly what Jeff Brown told Jenny Taft. And they haven't changed anything in the second half. Singleton, straight up the middle. And he will get to the 30. 24-21 Purdue. Fireworks here, side half. Sean Clifford, tender knee and all. It's the series here in the second half with what looked like a knee injury. And the run game has just not shown up. 3.2 yards per carry last year, 120th in college football tonight. 3.1 yards per carry. None of those carries going for over 10 yards. Singleton in the backfield. First down and 10 at the 30-yard line. Penn State may have to open it up now, but they don't. They give it to Singleton, and he's chopped down. Great job by Corey Trice. I was talking with Ron English, the defensive coordinator, before the game, and he mentioned Corey Trice. Watch him step right inside, and he just goes after Singleton, Singleton's legs and gets him to the ground. Excellent aggressiveness from the corner position. A loss of two, second and 12. Clifford. Jump pass, caught Tinsley, and he'll go nowhere. Nicely done. Scotty Humpick, and there's Coach English. We talked to him yesterday, folks. First year as the play caller, as the defensive coordinator. And what a refreshing, positive coach to have a chance to talk to. He wanted his team to play hard. Check. Play smart. Check. Deal with failure and success the same way. Check. what they do? They gave effort. And they're still giving it now. 24-21. Welcome back. They were shouting. Here in West Lafayette during the break as you take a look at the scoring by quarters big third quarter for the Boilers. Outscoring Penn State 14-0. 24 to 21 as we start the fourth. And I guess we should have expected that, right? You got a quarterback that's 24. He's married. It's his birthday. You know, some things didn't happen right at the end of the first half. And he's like, hey, fellas, I've seen this before. <laughs> I'm the old man. And the experience has paid off. Third down and 11, though, for Penn State. Big third down. Trailing 24 to 21. Clifford in trouble and sacked. They brought pressure. And this time it's Humpick. Scotty. First sack by either team tonight. How about Scotty Humpich? He runs the hump and gets to Clifford. He's a transfer from Murray State, so he comes in and a great move on that right side of the offensive line. And he's able to get around Caden Wallace and get to Sean Clifford, who doesn't have much of a chance in this boiler defense. How about Ron English doing a great job? Humpick doing a great job with that sack. So Penn State punts it away. Charlie Jones back in the game. Jones with the fair catch. A 49-yard punt. 
Pacific Life Game Summary, sponsored by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. Well, Purdue got the scoring going in this third quarter with King Doru around that right side two-yard rush. And then it was the great protection allowing O'Connell to find Charlie Jones in the back of the end zone and Purdue comes storming out of the halftime after giving up the momentum, giving up the fumble, then the touchdown. They went down and they have done an excellent job getting back in this ball game. And the, the best part about what they've done, Gus, is they never panicked. They just continued to execute their game plan because it's good, been a good one. On first down, O'Connell in trouble and now. Penn State returns serve, and they record their first sack of the night. Sutherland, a loss of seven. Well, that looks like a Manny Diaz-style attack right there, and you, you might see a little bit more aggressiveness out of the Penn State defense here now as we start the fourth quarter down three. Manny Diaz's M.O. throughout his career has been pressure. Gus Mann coverage, adding a linebacker to the rush. Very rarely will you just see a four-man rush. He wants that fifth and sixth guy getting after the quarterback, and we'll see if they start to incorporate that here in the fourth. Second down and 17 at the 19-yard line. O'Connell sets up a screen, drops it off, caught, down, and breaks it inside. And a flag on the play. Adisa Isaac with the tackle for Penn State. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, offense number 87. Half the distance to the goal, second down. Uh, you're going to be seeing Payne Durham, 87, and he's going to come in from outside that block, tackle blocks, and, and block right in the back of Tyler Elston. And that's the call. Elston was trying to get upfield, and now that puts Purdue way behind the chains. Second down and 26. From the 10. At this point, you're just kind of thinking about field position. Hey, how do we get as much of this back as we can in the next couple of snaps? If we can move the chains, great. But we don't want to be punting from inside of our 10-yard line. Downing in motion. Jones with the catch. Sliding through the Penn State defense will get close to the 20-yard line. It's a gain of eight. Hardy with the tackle. You know, if, if, if you really trust your defense, you would send a little bit of a pressure, try to get the ball out of the hand of the quarterback and not force your corners to cover for too long. But really, the smart play here on third and forever is try to sink back and keep your safeties deep. Third and 18. O'Connell is now thrown for 300 yards. On third and 18, O'Connell up the sideline for Jones. Knocked away. Well defended. That's King reaching around and just knocking it down. Kalen King has a knack for finding the football. That's what the coaches say. All camp, he is always right there. And he, he maybe gets away with that right hand up there. Charlie Jones is trying to work back to the ball. But Kalen King certainly has an opportunity at the ball as well. Cast Tech in Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> well, up, no. CT. Fourth down, they'll punt it. Washington, the deep man. And it's fair caught at the 45, so Penn State will start with decent field for Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. Gus, that's my guy right there. You know who that is? Which guy? Isaac, guy in the hat on the right. Uh -huh. Isaac. Sombrero guy. 8.20 a.m. this morning. I'm going over to do a promotional hit right outside the stadium. I'm walking. Guy pops out of a sleeping bag. He's like, Joe Clatt, what's going on, man? <laughs> and it's Isaac, right? And I'm like, Isaac, what are you doing? He's like, I slept here all night. And I'm like, how many people were in line? He's like, only me. 
I'm like, this guy is the best. You know why I love college football? For fans like Isaac. Isaac works at a retirement home, uh, Westminster Village. And he said, listen, I always pay the Cameron guys 20 bucks. I'm always in the front row so I can get on TV because everybody at Westminster Village loves when I'm on TV. Well, there you go, Isaac. Clifford down the field. And incomplete. And this, uh, I... At, it's 8.30 a.m., right? And I'm just struck by this is why I love college football. It's because of fans like that. And this and it hits me like a ton of bricks. College football ain't a hobby, folks. Did he, it's a did lifestyle. He, did, did he take a picture with you? Oh, absolutely. In fact, he had a Bluetooth Polaroid printer. And so we took a picture with the rest of it. There was four other guys in line with him. After, after he slept the night in the sleep bag, and we took a little Polaroid uh, with him right there at 8.30 in the morning. Well, I tell you what, the, 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 the ladies and gentlemen at the at the home are going to be happy when they see this, no and they see him tomorrow. Clifford over the middle. Nice catch. And it's Tinsley who picks up the first down. How did he get that ball in that spot? In, wow. I mean, he was in the draft, in the pocket. He had pressure in his face, and Clifford was able to just, with strength and will, get that ball down the middle of the field for a catch to Mitchell Tinsley. Gain of 17, first down. And they needed it. They have not had a lot of success here in the second half offensively. Clifford sprints out, looks backside, drops it off. He's got his man, Allen, and Allen will die forward. Looks like he has a first down as well as Clyde Washington stops him. And he may be short. A little misdirection there. Trying to roll Clifford out to the right side. Dump it off back to Catron Allen on the left side. And now Penn State's finding out a little bit of a rhythm here on offense after that beautiful completion to Tinsley over the middle of the field. Second down and one of the 29. Allen steps up. Clifford underneath, caught. Lambert, Smith, sprint, touchdown, Penn State. 29 yards. Great route combination on the outside from Penn State. Watch as you're going to get Tinsley. He's going to go up the field and he's going to allow Lambert Smith to come underneath. They find the space. And then it's about strength and agility. He comes off of the no wrap-up tackle, poor tackling by Purdue, and cuts it upfield for the touchdown. That is a great answer from Penn State and really started with that gutsy completion to start to drive the Tinsley over the middle. And then they found some rhythm. And there's Lambert Smith running into the end zone. Extra point good by Penninger. Four plays covering 55 yards. Nittany Lions scoring a minute and 20. Keandre Lambert Smith. Big time score. And just like that, Penn State back in business. Welcome back. 28 24. Lambert Smith's fourth career touchdown at Penn State. Don't forget his uncle was Cam Chancellor, who played seven years with the Seahawks. As for Shaw Clifford, this is the eighth time in his career Clifford has accounted for four touchdowns in a game. Our fifth lead change tonight, folks. We still have an eternity to play. 10:44. Nothing else to do. Charlie Jones goes to the sideline and is taken down shy of the 20 yard line. Tackle by Constantine. You know, it comes down to this. When Purdue has been able to protect O'Connell, thus they've marched the ball up and down the field. And there have been those moments when Manny Diaz has ratcheted up the pressure and gone to the blitz. And in those moments, that's when Penn State has been able to get off the field, force negative plays. We'll see if they stick with that pressure-oriented scheme here and try to put pressure in the face of the veteran quarterback. First down and 10 of the 18-yard line. Doru in the backfield. And they give it to him. Doru hard for running. Tell you what, King Doru has been very solid. Better than solid. That's a gain of eight. 
Doru, 13 carries, 57 yards. He's a 4.4 yards per carry. He has two touchdowns. And last year they were so one-dimensional. You know, they still won nine games, but it was it was tough. It was it was methodical. It was it was a lot of pressure on the passing game. Gus, they knew they weren't going to be a dominant run team, but they needed a complementary factor in the run game. They've certainly had it tonight with King Doru. Second down and short. The misdirection didn't fool anybody on Penn State's side. Vanover with the tackle. That's a loss of four. Yeah, and, and Beeman was in there as well. Thus, I think they misdirected themselves into not blocking anybody, right? I mean, there was so many linemen crossing around there, and Beeman was able to get in the backfield with for Manny Diaz. And now on third down, this is when Manny loves to dial up the pressure. And we've seen some exotic blitzes from him. We've seen him stand some guys up. Try to play man coverage on the outside and get after the quarterback. Third down and six. At the 22. O'Connell steps into his throw. And it's incomplete. Jones, the target, but broken up by Hardy. And that will force this Purdue team to punt it away again. Good coverage by Hardy. He did a great job there trying to run the crossing routes. And when you get in that tight bunch formation, a lot of times that's a tell for a defense that you're trying to bring those guys across the formation. Hardy read it perfectly and just jumped in front of the route. James Franklin has to be confident about the effort that his team has displayed tonight. And here's a man that just received a 10-year, $75 million extension last season to remain with the Nittany Lions through 2031. Our Pennsylvania guy, a quarterback at East Stroudsburg, truly one of the most talented coaches in all of college football. And to send it away. Parker Washington has it at the 35. And we'll take a break. The 28 24, 9 04, remaining in the fourth quarter. West Lafayette, Indiana. West Lafayette, 28-24, 9.04 to go in the fourth. Penn State with the lead and the ball. First down and 10 at the 36. Clifford hands it off to Lee. Lee with a nice run, stays on his feet, and picks up a first down. Yvonne Lee. That looks to be just the longest run of the night for Penn State, and that's exactly what they need right here in the fourth quarter is to find the run game that has been elusive for the better part of really two years for the Nittany Lions. Gains 12 yards, first down at the 48. Clifford over the middle. High and pick. Jefferson with room. Can he get a block? Chris Jefferson still on the move with a left. Jefferson, touchdown, Purdue, 72 yards. The defensive coordinator told us that his guys would play hard and make plays. And what a play that one was. Well, you can tell he ran hard. What a return. After that interception, really poor throw from Sean Clifford. Way over his target. And Jefferson was there. Finner, an extra point is good. Electricity in the air. Here in West Lafayette, Indiana. Chris Jefferson picked it off. And then turns in a spectacular run. Thirty-one. 
21-28. Purdue reclaims the lead after the 72-yard interception. Return for a touchdown by Chris Jefferson. Jefferson was a two-time Division II All-American at Findlay University in Ohio, where he had 12 interceptions over three seasons. None bigger than that one he just turned in. Had a pick last year here for Purdue, and he also turned in his best performance in their bowl win against Tennessee in that comeback win. Gus, he had 15 tackles in that game as the Boilermakers came back and beat the Volunteers. And they'll pick it up at the five-yard line and go down short of the 20. It's fired up this Penn State defense. Flag on the play. And Jefferson after the 70 yards jaunt. During the return, holding, receiving team number 82. This is the same goal, first down. Gus, let's go back to the interception. And as you watch Sean Clifford, he's going to be trying to get this route right here, and he's got the route. He's going to have Tinsley wide open and just airmails him. I mean, this, this ball is way over his head. Tinsley can't even jump up there and try to bat it down or do anything. He can't try to disrupt Jefferson. And Jefferson catches it almost like a punt. Steps in front, but then he starts getting the blocking and look at him, his head on a swivel. Great block right there. Little box out. And then he dives for the end zone. What a play. First down and 10 at the nine-yard line for Penn State. Clifford underneath, caught, and a first down. Good grab this time. It's Lambert Smith. Man, I, you know, you just, you just get the sense from Penn State fans. You, you can sense their frustration, you know, and, and trust me when I tell you this. You know, a veteran quarterback in college football, it's a, it's a strained relationship with the fan base because if you've been there for a long time, this means that you haven't been good enough to leave. Mm. First down at the 20. <laughs> Lee running. Graham with the tackle. Eight of one. One thing that Sean Clifford talked to me about when we chatted this week was he felt like he spent a lot of time on his mentality and working in the offseason on, okay, if a mistake happens, how do I clear my head and take a deep breath and get back with the flow of the game as quickly as possible? And here's his chance right here. Second and nine. Play fake. Clifford sets up a screen as his man. Not a lot of room to run, though, however. Warren, back of tight end, dropped by Jamari Brown. This, this defense, I give Ron English a lot of credit. I said early, Gus, remember what I said? Some is probably greater than the parts. They don't have any one great player like they did a year ago, but they have played hard. They have played as a unit, as, as 11 pieces out there, eyes on the football. They've tackled fairly well, except for two occasions when they gave up big plays. And here's a great chance for them to get off the field on a big third down. Third down and seven at the 23. Clifford has got to make a play. Clifford looking and incomplete. That ball thrown behind his intent receiver. Harrison Wallace to Jamari Brown right in his hip pocket. Coverage was great everywhere down the field. Nobody was open. Penn State receivers look a little bit tired. Not a lot of effort down the field. Look, I mean, there's not a lot of space. The defenders are in perfect position. Their technique is impeccable. And all the while, deep Cam Allen over the top as Brown is able to step in front. And Jamari Brown breaks up the pass on a third down. But Moore will send it away, standing inside his own 10. Charlie Jones with the fair catch at the 32. 6.27 to go. Purdue with the football again and the lead. Penn State had fought back a gutsy series. They take a four-point lead, and you think to yourself, this is when you need a run game, and they've struggled for so long trying to establish that run game. They get the longest carry of the night. Lee scampers for a first down on the next play, Gus. They try to get aggressive, go down the field. 
and it cost him. And now a veteran quarterback out there with 627 left trying to orchestrate a huge drop. Now this Penn State defense has to get the ball back quickly. Here's O'Connell to the sideline, incomplete. Jones, the intended receiver. And you're going to see the aggressiveness ratchet up. Tight man coverage. And this is going to come down to a matchup. And I suspect the ball will go to Charlie Jones eventually. I think Manny Diaz knows that. He doesn't flip his corner side to side. So right now, Charlie Jones has the matchup against Johnny Dixon at the bottom of your screen. That's the matchup, and at some point, O'Connell's going to go to Charlie Jones here. Look, Nine. he's got the one-on-one, -on -one, Gus. Nine catches, 109 yards for Jones, and a touchdown. Four on the play clock. They get it off, O'Connell. Underneath, and incomplete. Great defense by Joey Porter, Jr. He's so good, isn't he? Yes, he is. Oh, man, the makeup speed there, the length. That ball might have been just a hair behind the target, but Porter in perfect position and comes over the top. Here he is at the top of your screen. Watch him get in the hip pocket of the route right here, and he makes up space, and then there's the length. You hear all those, you know, draft pundits always, oh, he's long, he's long. Well, I didn't know. well that's why you need length right there. He just replays out and bats the ball down. Third down and ten. Big opportunity for Penn State to get off the field and get the football back. From the 31-yard line, Charlie Jones, the receiver at the bottom of your screen. In, in a true one-on-one. -on -one. Now he's in a little motion here. Kalen King guarding him. O'Connell underneath and caught. First down, T.J. Sheffield. A 15-yard gain on third and 10. Watch them work zones. O'Connell understands that he's got a big soft spot in the zone. Watch that. There's nobody there, so he understands what route structure can beat that, and he allows the route to get open, come open, and boom, throws it on time. That's a huge, huge completion on a third down. Third down inside of six minutes now in the fourth quarter. First down at the 46. Kim Doru. Lines up in the backfield. They may try to milk the clock. No, O'Connell's going to throw it again. O'Connell off his back foot. Jones over the shoulder, incomplete, but a flag. It looks like this is going to be another interference call against the Penn State DBs. Johnny Dixon's covering, and they've been holding and grabbing all evening. Yeah, and it's plagued Purdue's defense as well. As you see, they're trying to run a double move, a slant and go. It's called a sluggo. That's interference. Defense, number three, ball be placed in the spot in foul, automatic first down. And those double move routes, that's difficult for the defender. And in particular, when they get out of position, they get a little lazy, Gus, and all of a sudden that double move happens. All they can do is reach out, or they're going to get beat. First down at the Penn State 45 for the Boilers. That's 16 that's targets for Charlie Jones. 16. Nine catches over 109 yards. O'Connell. Incomplete. Tyrone Tracy. And he's guarded by Keaton Ellis. Brings up second down. Uh, that's one of the few slants that he's missed on. That was behind his target there as Tracy... Had a small window for a potential completion. That ball was thrown behind him. Second down and 10 at the 45. Hayden Connell comes it. Caught. Flag. Durham breaks tackles. Hops forward. And he's at the Penn State 30. Let's see, though. It's a 15-yard gain if it stands. Now, this is going to be a chop block in the backfield. Personal foul. Chop block. Offense number 22 and 53. 15-yard penalty. Second down. So Doru is coming up, and then the center as well. And watch as the blitzing linebacker right here. That's Curtis Jacobs. He's coming back, and there he's he's engaged high, and then the chop occurs low. Doru goes after his leg, and right then, both flags come out. And it looked like a great individual effort and potential first down and a great play on this series, and now it comes way back. 
And now Purdue has some serious adversity here on this drive. So that'll make it second and 25 at the 40. Exception. Joey Porter Jr. played this to perfection. Watch him get his hands on the wide receiver, but then not grab, and then he turns back to the ball immediately. I mean, that is great instincts right there. I I, I question the decision by O'Connell to throw an, a, a hitch route to the wide side of the field against a guy that's likely going to be a first-round draft pick. You know, that's that's tough right there. So that makes it third down and 25 at the 40. Six lead changes in this game. O'Connell, here comes a blitz and a whistle. Delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. You know, this this whole series, you, know, you feel like what they start with. I think they had like about 6:30, 6:40 left on the clock, and and they have just not eaten the necessary clock. Some nervous Penn State and Purdue fans, you know, and I know Jeff. Pro listen, Jeff Brown understands he's not just going to sit there and run the clock out with their run game. But at the same time, you got to have a little bit more semblance of, of a methodical nature to try to eat up as much time as you possibly can. And these penalties have certainly hurt them in that regard. Third down and 30 from their own 35. O'Connell seam route incomplete, broken up. Johnny Dixon Durham, the tight end the target and now Purdue will send it away with four minutes and 56 seconds remaining well the defense did their job didn't they and in particular those guys on the outside led by Joey Porter Jr. Hardy there with a good play we saw Kalen King with some good defense there and that, that aggressive nature of those corners really paid off Jack Ansel will punt it away from the 21. Parker Washington stands around the 25. Wobbly kick. Fair caught at the 27. A 38-yard punt. Let's take a look at the scoring in the second half. Boy, it's been a good one. King Doru early in the third quarter. Took the sweep around the right side. He got in the end zone. O'Connell finds Charlie Jones in the back of the end zone. And then Penn State came back, scored a touchdown, and then Jefferson was able to get a pick six. Long return off of Sean Clifford. 72-yard return, and it's 31-28. Purdue here now with 4.50 left. And the Nittany Lions with the ball. Both teams with three timeouts. First down and 10. Clifford. Looking. Clifford. In trouble, and he'll just basically throw the ball down. That's a really smart throw away from Clifford. If that ball didn't go, eligible receiver number 10 was in the vicinity. There is no foul for ground. Second down. And also, he's not going to get penalized for a lineman downfield, even though Drew Scruggs was downfield because the ball didn't go past the line of scrimmage. If you're running try one of those screen passes as a quarterback, you know, if you've got to throw it away, you throw it at the feet of, a, of, the, of the running back, and it can't go past the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. Here comes a blitz. Clifford. And it's knocked down. Graham was the blitzer. Got his hands high in the air and redirected the football. Jalen Graham, the playmaker, 6'3, 220. Good blitz. On the edge. Gets his hands up. And now third and ten. They've got to get some pressure on Clifford. And Clifford's got to make a play. Third down and 10. Yeah. 
Sean Clifford looking. Clifford over the middle. Incomplete. Keandre Lambert Smith felt that he was open. And that brings up fourth down for the Nittany Lions, and they'll have to punt it away with 4.35 to go. He got enough protection, but Keandre Lambert Smith is begging for a flag right here. Top of screen number one, watch as he's coming inside, and he feels like he gets grabbed right oh, there. He certainly did. And he did, and we've been seeing those flags come out most of the night, and right there it stays in the pocket, and now Penn State will have to punt it away. Reese Taylor, the defender. Lamar. Inside his own 15, Charlie Jones at the 32. Beautiful punt, angle toward the far side. And fair caught at the 24. 49-yard punt. And with 4.28 to go, Purdue with the football again. And we're going to see if they learned their lesson on the last series. Will we get to some run game if it's time to milk the clock for Purdue? King Doru has been pretty efficient tonight, Gus. You've talked about it several times. And then if they're going to throw the ball, Drew Brees knows this as a quarterback. you got to be efficient with it, with the completions. And then you've got to manage the clock and only snap it if the play clock is inside of five seconds. O'Connell under center. O'Connell in trouble. Gets it away. It's caught. Thompson. Doesn't go far, maybe a yard, yard and a half. Boy, what a play from O'Connell. He took a hit. He knows he's going to try to run this a little like bootleg, and he knows there's going to be pressure in his face. Tries to get his head around as quickly as he can. Watch her get his head around. Sutherland's right in his face, and he just tries to dump it over <laughs> to Brock Thompson. I tell you, man, that is tough to do as a quarterback, and... He'll be the first to admit he's not the most fleet of foot, but there he did a nice job. Second down and nine. And this is where you don't snap the ball until that play clock is inside of five. It's at five now. Now you'll wait till it's about two and then snap. And there you go. O'Connell underneath. Knocked down by Joey Porter. Incomplete pass. Once again, Rice, the intended receiver, that stops the clock at 336. And they again attack the best corner on the field. I just don't understand this strategy. Porter, yes, he's going to get away with a little bit of a, a tug, but he's not turning the wide receiver. He's using his hands, and then he's in there, and he's made every single one of these a tight window throw. Clock stops, don't get to run it down, and now it's 336 left. Porter has three pass breakups in this game, eight tackles. Third down and nine. O'Connell over the middle. Jones with another catch. Charlie Jones continues to excel. That's a first down and a gain of 17. What a night for Chuck Sizzle. He's been hot since the very beginning. You want to talk about trust? Watch these three Penn State defenders. They're going to drop out, and O'Connell says, okay, I'm going to go one on three. That's incredible. He throws a slant inside of three Penn State defenders. That's a matchup that you should not throw into, but he goes to his best target, Charlie Jones. That's the trust he has in a short time with a veteran transfer from Iowa. But even more important, they pick up the first down. The clock continues to wind down. Charlie Jones, 10 catches, 126 yards, and a touchdown. Now they'll stay on the ground. Doru. King Doru, tackled by Elsden. He gains three. Penn State calls their first time out of the second half. Man, what a throw. What a month for this guy, right? Aiden O'Connell. My goodness, you talk about life-changing month. Let's go downstairs to Jenny for more. Well, we briefly mentioned this, right? How busy his offseason is. And he did get married to Jael Johnson. She played volleyball for the Boilermakers. And O'Connell admitted to us it was really hard. That invite list, he said, I wanted to invite all my teammates. Of course, that's not possible. That would bend everyone. But <laughs> look at all these hairdos. <laughs> that's a great Look picture. at this. I mean, the facial expressions. So the story is they all kept their hair long for the wedding and then cut it right before. 
the season starts. Aiden said, yes, I'm older. I I'm 24. I'm in a little bit of a different stage in my life, but my teammates know I respect them, and I hope that they feel the same about me. And look at the way Aiden has been able to lead Purdue tonight. Terrific numbers, 27 of 48, 332, and a touchdown, no interceptions. He said they got a lot of presents, and his favorite present, the blender. He loves smoothies. First timeout, Purdue, their first. This is a 30-second timeout. What a night. Uh, now on the opposite side. Because Penn State has got to come up with some way to get this ball back. And Manny Diaz, the new defensive coordinator, he's got to sell out to stop the run. Seems like Jeff Brom is going to go that direction. So you got to make sure you put the necessary assets up near the line of scrimmage to stop the run, and then they would likely go ahead and burn that second timeout and try to save as much clock as they possibly can. Set down at 7. 31-28, 2 50 remaining in the fourth. Opening game for both these teams. O'Connell will throw it. O'Connell in trouble. O'Connell buys time across the field. Oh, what a catch by Doom! Spectacular grab. Payne Durham. 21 yards. I cannot believe he got to this ball. <laughs> I don't know, Gus. I don't know if he controlled that. That ball clearly hit the ground. Going on the field is a completed catch. The plays under further review. Oh, this one's going to be tight. Drew Brees celebrating on the sideline. That looked like an unbelievable catch. The problem is he had to secure it before that ball touched the ground. And then there can be no bobble after it hits the turf. Wow. There's control, but then the, the right hand comes off of it. I, I just think that this is coming back. I mean, can they say that that left hand is controlling enough, Mike? Pereira is with us, Gus. What do you think? Boy, Joel, I am just like you. This is so close. So it is the element of control first. Did he use the ground to complete the catch? That's the question that they ask themselves. Now, you look at that left hand, and you say, is it enough to consider that is control before it gets to the ground right there? It's kind of one of those, and we're all doing it the same. Oh, man, it's close, it's close, it's close. Remember what was ruled on the field, that it was a catch. It, I, I, again, I, I just think, again, that he used the ground yeah, I do too. to control the ball. And I, I just, do, too. I don't see it as a catch. I don't either, Mike. For further review, it's an incomplete pass. It's third down. I mean, that is really tight, but the, but the bottom line is, folks, that left hand just that is not securing the ball. That, that The ground helped him bring it to the chest. I, I'm with Mike on that. I know that's, Gus, that's an extraordinarily tough call, but I, I agree with that call. So that make it third and six. And more importantly, Gus stops the clock and maintains those two timeouts for Penn State. Wipes away a 21-yard gain. Penn State and Purdue, both teams with two timeouts remaining. 
When they go to this bunch set, Gus, they love to run those crossing routes. Everybody crossing. Left side going to the right, right side going over to the left. They've got Payne Durham right here. They're tied in. And I would watch for something across the field as these guys are going on this side. Expecting that man coverage. And then they've always got to watch out for the swing route right here, too. Jones in motion out of the backfield. O'Connell pulls it out. O'Connell throws it deep. He's got a man incomplete. Great recovery for this Penn State secondary. Sheffield was the target, but Daquan Hardy made up some ground when the ball was in the air. Sheffield's open for a moment. Right there, he beats him. And Hardy makes up the space. O'Connell did not put enough on that ball. That needed to be way out in front. It was a bit underthrown. It allows Hardy to come in there and break it up. That is a terrific play. After getting beat at the line of scrimmage, Breeze wants it, but it's incomplete. Parker Washington, the deep man at the 15. Ansel will send it away. Washington lets it go over his head and into the end zone for a touchback. So the good news for Penn State fans. Nittany Lions have two minutes and 22 seconds remaining and two timeouts. Down 31-28. Remember at the end of the first half, they showed an ability to score quickly when Strange caught a ball on the sideline and they were going in this direction and took it in for the into the end zone for touchdown. We'll start from the 20. Clifford underneath. And Tinsley with the catch short of the first down. We'll get up quickly. Eight yard gain. Kane with the tackle. Clifford again looking in trouble. Just guns it and incomplete. This coverage have, has given Penn State fits and Sean Clifford fits. They're only rushing four, and they're, and they're sinking back into coverage. And those linebackers, Gus, they, they're just sitting there. They're squatting in their zones, and there's nowhere to go with the football. And Clifford continues to have to pump and pat that ball in the pocket. Third down and two at the 28. Lambert Smith crosses. Clifford finds him. And he picks up the first down and gets out of bounds. Six-yard gain. Nice little design screen there, designed to move the chains. They get it done, and now the clock will start again. First down and 10 of the 34. Here's a handoff. Allen with some running room, dives forward. That picks up about seven. 143 and counting. And they certainly have got some rhythm here. They will save their two timeouts as the clock runs here and try to get up and quickly snap it. Second down and two at the 43. Clifford, near side, caught. First down. Tinsley still running down the sideline. And Tinsley out of bounds, close to the 25. A 28-yard gain with 1.23 to go. Clock stops. Penn State still with two timeouts. And again, a missed tackle. We've seen it a couple of times. And now all they need is a field goal. They've struggled from distance from Pinnegar here, their field goal kicker. It would be about 46 from here. Certainly want to get closer. First and 10 at the 30. Clifford drops it off in the flats. Lee needs to get out of bounds, and he does. Or does he? They gave him the stop clock, and it'll stop at a minute 14 and saves the two timeouts. Graham with the tackle. Five-yard gain. Second down and five. Clifford, pump fake. Looks underneath. Caught. And more. This time it's Warren, who's all the way down at the...
the 10 yard line. This is incredible. With 107 to go, and they still haven't used a timeout. And now they should be taking their time a little bit. They don't need to score too quickly. Clifford sprints out, lofts it up. Touchdown, Penn State! Unbelievable! Kevon Lee! Magical! With 57 seconds to go! You get clear outs from this side, Gus. Look at this. They're clearing out on this side, and then they just send Lee on a little swing route. He's lined up one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker who blows the coverage. Clyde Washington gets beat. Lee is open. Clifford hits him. By far Clifford's best series of the night, and he waited until he had to have it. Played brilliant on that series. Pettiger in for the extra point. And it's good. Huge extra point, 35-31. Now Purdue needs a touchdown with 57 seconds to go. That's one of the best drives Will Flat I've ever seen. Well, listen, they, that was clockwork. You get into that rhythm. And then Purdue tried to get the blitz going, and they got caught. Washington playing that linebacker spot, he's got to understand he's in man coverage. And so many times, blitzers... Gus, they always think that if I blitz, the guy I'm defending, he's just going to cover me. And he's going to block me. But he didn't happen. Lee was out on the route. Gets behind Washington. And he's open for the touchdown. Sean Clifford, 6 of 7 for 72 yards on that drive. Besties look all night long. The second half has not been pretty for Penn State offensively. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree with you 100%. And, and that was gorgeous the last series where'd that come from unbelievable clifford has accounted for five touchdowns four td passes and a touchdown rushing tonight for the first time in his career that's our seventh lead change so purdue with 57 seconds remaining and two timeouts two wusu has had a big leg all night Here's Jones inside the five, and Jones upended short of the 20-yard line with 53 seconds to go. Well, now Purdue has two timeouts less than 53, but they need to go all the way and get into the end zone. O'Connell has shown that he wants to target his most trusted wide receiver. Remember, Charlie Jones transfers in. These guys have known each other since they were playing youth baseball together. Transfers in from Iowa, and O'Connell has targeted him over 16 times tonight. And I suspect that we're going to get a heavy dose of that here on this last series. They'll start from their own 19-yard line. First down and 10, O'Connell lets it go. And incomplete. Threw that one in the double coverage. Intended for Sheffield and broken up by Ellis. Boy, Ellis had a chance to basically end the game right there. Thought that he had a beat on picking that ball off. Unable to do so here, and now 48 ticks left. Boy, they have been living and dying with that press coverage on the outside, haven't they? And it just it feels like they're going to continue to do it, and they are. Look at those corners right up in the mustache of the wide receiver. Second and 10 at the 19. O'Connell under pressure drops it off Charlie Jones picks up a first down and gets out of bounds stopping the clock with 41 seconds to go 12-yard gain he's had a spectacular night and that's the style of route that they're gonna have to run they're gonna have to get pick routes two-man concepts like that or bring a guy all the way across the set like you just saw with Charlie Jones to try to get away from some of this tight press man coverage remember Payne Durham their tight end 87 has been good down the scene first and 10 O'Connell looking O'Connell sack how about that Johnny Dixon with the sack great pressure by Manny Diaz and the Penn State defense he beats Doru, the running stick inside. Great inside move. He's able to get to O'Connell and sack him back at the 21-yard line. 
That is the killer in those two minute situations, in particular, once you get inside of a minute. And James Franklin knows this. Boy, Sacks just kill drives. And Manny Diaz dials up a unique pressure there. Johnny Dixon playing corner, slot corner, and he comes on that blitz, and King Dolu is unable to get him down. How many times did we see this defense come up with big plays to finish off games last year? Now, granted, it was names like Jaquan Brisker, who's now in the NFL, or Arnold Ebicady, Brandon Ellis. These guys, well, now it's the new Nittany Lions. It's their turn. It's Johnny Dixon and Jair Brown and Joey Porter and Adisa Isaac. And we'll see if these guys can make the plays necessary to grab the W. Second down and 20, 35 seconds left. One time out for Purdue. O'Connell. Over the middle, caught by Charlie Jones again, and he goes down in front of Hardy, gaining 15. They need a timeout here. They are wasting way too much time. They get to the line of scrimmage quickly. Third and five, O'Connell over the middle, oh, incomplete. And that was Durham down the seam in front of Curtis Jacobs. They absolutely should have taken that. Last time out after the completion to Charlie Jones. Way too much time coming off the clock as you're trying to run the offensive lineman 15 yards up the field and now on a fourth down. Got to have it. O'Connell likely takes his best matchup here. Got to get a first. Fourth down and five. 13 seconds to go. Purdue with one time out. O'Connell. Drops it off in the flat. Caught by Downing. And Downing picks up the first down. Clock stopping at seven. But they'll have to call their timeout because it would start right when the chains were set. So Purdue now out of timeouts. Seven seconds to go. First down and ten at the 42. They maybe have a chance to try to complete something outside the numbers, in particular to the short side of the field, that left side of the field, inside of seven seconds, just to try to make the one final ditch effort, you know, not so long. Try to get some positive yardage here, maybe get it across the 50 yard line. The only problem with that is you know, seven seconds, that ball better get out of O'Connell's hands pretty quickly and get out of bounds. Sean Clifford has had an up and down game in a sense. He threw the interception to Chris Jefferson, which was seen at the time as, well, could have been seen at the time as a backbreaker, but that last drive, it's one of the best drives you'll ever see in football. Remember what he told me. I'm always a deep breath away from a good series. Mm. And he throws the interception. And here he is. Six of seven for 72 yards. Wow. I mean, impressive stuff. He's thrown for 290 yards tonight. Four touchdowns, one interception. First down and ten. Seven seconds to go. To the sideline. It is complete. Once again, it's Joey Porter. Four seconds to go now, and this may very well be the final play of the game. And they're going to try to do something tricky if O'Connell can't get it all the way to the end zone. we got guys all the way back at the goal line. No timeouts. O'Connell in the shotgun. O'Connell, last play, steps up, and is sacked. Incomplete, and that's a ball game. What a finish, folks. The Penn State Nittany Lions come back. Chop Robinson with the sack. Penn State somehow, out of nowhere, the Nittany Lions come back, led by Sean Clifford, and he wins this game on one of the greatest drives you'll see in college football. James Franklin will get out of West.
West Lafayette by the hair of his chinny chin chin. Whew. I got to tell you, that was a gutsy performance. Going on the road during the week, prime time, you got the blackout. And that's why our above and 